Mother. Man. Crikey, good day. Ivan Malat here. I'm going to shoot you in your face after we listen to Murder Metal Man. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal Man! Chris, get a little crazy in here with some Australian stuff going down. What's up, you fucking down. fox? <laughs> <laughs> we had Ivan Milad uh, doing a little promo for us. Of course, it's Tuesday, and we're doing that thing we do here at Horns High Studios for the Horns High Podcast Network. Chris, doing episode 147, Fuck dude. Fuck yeah, we are. Oh, Inch yeah. closer to the big 150. So. 150's coming up quick. We got a good one coming up for that. Yeah, we really do. We got a good schedule here. Of course, I got Joey and Chris both here with yep. me. Uh, Joey doing okay. He re- rebounded after being in here over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> we had fun. That was <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, was awesome. That I was fucked cool. that all up. <laughs> well, hey, family always comes first. I told you that when we first met, so that's always more important. Um, so, no, you had some family stuff going on, and uh, glad we're here tonight. What shirts we got on, Chris? What do you got going I got on my, uh, I got my Gorgy shirt that kind of reminds me of Spike here on the table. It does. <laughs> I see uh, that. Yeah. I see the familial similarity. Right? There. It's there. It's there. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Joey, what about you, dude? Uh, I got the Necro Cannibal Ass Grinder logo nice. shirt and then the Gore Pot hat on. Fuck yeah. Yeah, and I got my Gormonger hat on. You do. Nice, with the nice. Pot leaf on it. Where the butt at? <laughs> <laughs> and Crop I got chasing. this new uh, Byzantine shirt oh, yeah. that I ordered, their Snake Pit shirt. That's yeah. pretty sweet shirt. Yeah, I really like this shirt, and I uh, love those guys. And they were supposed to be the feature tonight, but we did some switching around. Since we got an Australian theme show tonight, we're going all out oh, yeah. with the Australian thing. But we'll get to that. Now, last week, we did an episode uh, number 146 on Whitey Bulger. That was some brutal shit. That was a good one. A uh, gangster from South Boston, a Southie. Uh, we talked about his life of crime that culminated in him being savagely beaten to death in prison How when he's in his he was 80s. on the run, though, dude? He oh, was. Man. He was on the run forever. He was a boss, cuts. man. He was on the man. top 10 FBI list and... Uh, only Osama bin Laden was higher than him and the higher reward than him. So he was a badass. Uh, so that was a good one. And we had CK call in to talk about the band Red Fang. I actually saw a positive comment on Facebook. Somebody said that somebody they knew was a big fan of Red Fang. So. Stephanie's from Toledo. Yeah, her uncle. Oh, okay. And she was saying that she's at a birthday party or something for him right now, and he's he's there from Seattle, and he's got his oh, red crazy. fang shirt on. No, I said, I said send me a picture. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. That's really cool. Yeah, he should dig that then. That's great. Uh, you know, CK loves talking about bands we don't know about sometimes, Hell so yeah. that was cool. And we had a good mayhem story from CK yep. and Chris as well, and that was a good one. We Fucking passed right. about 900 or so. When I checked it today, and you know, that one was done a day later, and it definitely throws off the listens. Right. Oh, for because sure. Because we have a lot of our European and out of US listeners listening to it before we wake up on Thursday. So I'm sure that threw them off a bit. But I think we'll see the hit, the listens, but it may just take a little longer. But it was just under a thousand when I checked it. It's still good. So thank you guys. Oh, yeah, Episode 146. Check it out, man. Now, tonight, we got a good one. Uh, We are going all out. We're doing another Australian killer, guys. We've been pumped up for this one. Chris, a little backpacking. Fucking yeah. Ivan Malat, man. Hell yeah, dude. Dude's fucked up. Brutal shit. Dude's fucked up. I mean, really brutal. Uh, Very, very sadistic. The whole torture, the imprisonment, and then the murdering of at least two men and five women in New South Wales, Australia, from 1989 to 1993. And we were talking about this, guys, that he inspired the movie Wolf Creek, and that's fucking brutal, man. That's a good one. Have you seen that? I haven't seen it, no. Joey, I know you have. Man, that's sick, man. The guy they got playing the Malat quote-unquote character, because it's not exactly the the same, but you you definitely get the impression that they they, there's some things that are very similar. We're going to talk about that. Yep. 
But uh, if you guys that are listening may have seen the movie and didn't realize it had to do with this, but but it does. Um, was it Mick Taylor in his name? And that? I don't remember his name. I just know he was great. Yeah. He's in both of them. And there's this movie called, uh, I'm going to fuck up which movie this is. I think it's Dark Water. But it's made by the same director or whatnot. Oh, okay. And and the guy who plays Mick in uh, Wolf Creek, it plays just like it, they're like going out on a fucking gator thing, get caught by these gators. Oh wow! Uh, but he plays one of the the passengers on the boat, and he's just oh, like cool. a super subdued, normal, chill. Oh, guy. nice! And After going wildest, fucking yeah. hog wild yeah. in fucking Wolf Creek, <laughs> like hardcore. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I have to watch that. Um, but we're going to dig into that subject. Uh, we're going to go down under fully. We got, Chris, some Vegemite here. <laughs> Fucking Vegemite. We've been talking about this, talking a lot of shit when we've interviewed the Australian bands. And Jenny, my wife, ordered it on Amazon from Australia. It is the real thing, guys. Yeah. So we're going to eat some Vegemite on some toast with lots of butter, according to Sean Ferrugia. Of in Malice's Wake. And those guys are going to laugh because we're going to do a Facebook Live yes. while we're eating this but stuff. So it should be a lot of fun. Joey's had it before. So. Yeah, Joey has tried it, and uh, but I'm, neither I'm, of us I'm have. I'm feeling like Jenny's going to prepare it a little better than what I did. <laughs> right. It was an art. Like I, I just told her, it. do not be fucking chintzy on the butter. <laughs> Ooh, not for this. And no. <laughs> light glaze of the Vegemite warmed up, yeah. as our boy Rick Ring has told yeah. us from... Uh, yeah, game. oh yeah, he totally warmed it up because yeah. Otherwise. So we've got Sean and and uh, Rick helping us out here. <laughs> That's but, a lot, guys. We appreciate that. Yeah, and Fuck. I tried. I went to three different liquor stores. <laughs> All I could do is Fosters, and yeah. I know the Australians listening are like. That's not fucking Australian right. beer. I know it's not. It's made in Texas. I know that. But it says Australia on the can. It does. So that's it what says we're it on the can. <laughs> so and that's what we're going for. We're the best we could do. We apologize. <laughs> but I did get some yellowtail wine for my wife, and that is from, from Australia. Australia. So we, we hopefully you know save face. We've got a lot of Australian listeners yeah, here. We do. Yeah. We got the, the top ten countries list or cities listening. Uh, so thanks, all of you that are listening from Australia. So we're going to have some fun. You guys will get a laugh at, a, at three Americans eating Vegemite. But uh, it should be interesting. And that'll be at the beginning of the murder segment. So that should be fun. We got CK warming up and getting ready to throw down, of course, in the metal segment. He had quite the weekend. Yes, he did. So not a good one either. No, he was rushed to the hospital there in Danbury. Uh, we're going to let him tell you the story. He wants to do it in mayhem. Yeah, It's about as mayhem as it gets. Yeah. Uh, pretty brutal stuff. So CK, thankfully, he's he's a fucking animal, man. I got this text right when we were doing the Voice of Dread yeah. from his wife, Laura, saying, I got to call the ambulance, CK. I'll get back to you. I had no idea what that meant. No idea. So I was a mess. For about three hours until I actually heard from her and, and it told me what happened. So we're going to hear from CK about that. But Joey, you're going to step in and help out uh, CK and do yeah. a little feature. You picked the band tonight. Yeah, we're doing a disentomb from uh, Queensland, Australia. Nice. Uh, Nasty, it, uh, dude. With the Australian theme. Oh, my God. They're fucking brutal yeah, death metal. It, old school fucking death metal. Yeah, we'll talk about them. But in, in, in my opinion, they are one of the heaviest bands of all time. I would agree with you, yeah. dude. That's some brutal stuff. Um, so we're doing all Australian bands tonight, and, of course, that feature on Dis and Tomb. Uh, so all the bands, the bumper music, even the karaoke yep. is all Australian <laughs> tonight. So it should be wicked. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. All right, we got a good killer cage match tonight, guys. Always love doing these. Chris, okay, we got some we got, uh, listeners to say thank you to. Yeah, we do. We got Steph Stephanie Ruskinoff. We got Rebecca Boomsock. And Tommy McFalls, so thank you guys. Fucking Hell appreciate yeah. your support. Hell yeah, all women uh, providing the numbers. And, of course, we use those numbers to come up with our killers fighting in the cage. 
Uh, Joey, who do we got up tonight? This is kind of a crazy one. It is, and it seems a little <laughs> bit one-sided in some respects, but I feel like it's going to be a good one to to belt out. Oh, so, it'll be fun. So yeah. we're doing uh, the co-ed killer, Ed Kemper, right? and he's going to be going up against that fucking cult leader known as Jim Jones. It's yeah, fucking, you got this what? six foot seven beast of a fucking guy going Jim's up against Jim Jones. Jim's all fucking coked up, yeah. though, dude. That's true, man. He's been up for a few days. <laughs> <He's all laughs> <whacked. laughs> yeah, he He's a fucking jumping around, and so, yeah, it should be interesting. Wiping his ass with leaves and guy. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, fuck it. We'll have two objects to fight with, so that'll be fun. And a variable. I, I came up with 15 new variables. Nice. So, oh, new ones? Yes, right. brand new ones. So uh, I just updated it, so that should be fun. I figure, why not? It's been a while. Yeah. So stay tuned for the Mayhem segment to see how Ed Kemper and Jim Jones fight <laughs> to the death in the cage. So... Uh, thank you to everybody that's out there listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. We really appreciate it. Keep seeing the numbers coming in. This week we're at about 2,700, a couple hundred down from the week before. But we, like we said, with the episode coming out a day later, yeah. that throws it off a little. But it corrects itself. We'll probably have a bigger week next week. So thank you, though, very much. Hell yeah. Uh, you guys are fucking awesome. Uh, keep spreading that word. Fucking right. Like a case of the clap in a trailer park, just like our slogan. I'm not in the trailer park no more. Okay. That's right. Man. <laughs> keep Moving spreading that up. like some Vegemite then. Moving <laughs> it on <laughs> up. So. All right, Chris and Joey, we've got a lot on our plate tonight. We're going to head down under to the Belangelo State Forest in New South Wales, Australia. Let's hope we don't run into a crazy fucker stalking backpackers. I think our toast and Vegemite is ready. And the beer is nice and cold, so Chris... Fuck yeah, let's get our backpacking murders on. Mate. some desecrator oh, with yeah. their song Talking summoning right, brand new stuff got a new album coming out this month and andrew hudson the guitarist and singer for harlot a friend of the show did an interview with him is now in desecrator just playing guitar doing some backing vocals so they're actually touring together which is really cool right. it works out unfortunately only in australia and hopefully they can still do it with all this pandemic stuff happening again but, yeah right so give them a listen and support Aussie Metal. Again, Desecrator, good band. Check them out. All right, now I've got this. Uh, we're going to do a face. We've never done this before. Actually, no, in the middle of recording an episode, we're doing a Facebook Live. And so uh, right now, uh, we are live on Facebook oh, because we've fuck. got a very special thing we're doing here. My wife, Jenny, uh, got us a special treat. Uh, since we're doing this Australian episode, she ordered us some Vegemite Hell yeah. on Amazon, and it's the real thing. It says, uh, you know, from Australia. Never had it. And, uh, Joey's yeah, had it, and we've he's never not, he doesn't had talk it. very highly of it. Joey's tried it. We've talked a lot of shit about Vegemite <laughs> with our Australian friends, so they're going to get a good laugh here live as we eat this. And Sean Ferrugi of In Malice's Wake told me put plenty of butter on the yeah. toast. So we've done that. And then our buddy uh, Rick Ring from Gape, he said to warm the uh, the Vegemite up a little bit, which we did. So we are following the Australians' instructions here very closely. Um, it's supposed to be a very salty uh, yeast byproduct after beer is made. So I like beer. If you're listening and you're like, what the fuck are they talking about with Vegemite? Of course, the Men at Work song, that's what made it famous to everybody f not from Australia. Right. And so anyway... Uh, that's what it is, is yeast from after they make beer. So kind of sounds nasty. Um, but I did my best to get Australian beer, and all I could find is Foster's. I know. I'm about to open this The Australian <laughs> listeners. Yeah, open them up. We each have one uh, to drink while we're doing this. So we got some Foster's. It was the closest thing I could get. So our Aust Australian listeners, I'm sorry. Jenny got some Yellowtail Moscato. Now that's so, real. So that's real. And that is real. And that is real. 
uh, really Australian. So we tried our best. And so here we are. We're going to uh, give this a shot, Chris and Joey. Fuck. And we're going to eat some Vegemite. I've got the camera on me, but I'm going to pass I'm this. Gonna, I'm gonna, oh, okay. You're going to pass it? I'll pass okay. it around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pass it around. But here, we're going to see this. I want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny's just straight up <laughs> hell Actually, no. I didn't think it was that bad. Jenny's straight up know, hell. No. <laughs> That's <right>. great. <laughs> Take a drink of that wine. <laughs> uh, I didn't think it yeah. was that bad. I'm, I'm being completely serious. Foster's. All right, now we'll try this Vegemite out. Now I've had this before, but something tells me that Jenny made it a little bit better than what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to finish it. Jenny straight up just like, fuck no. <laughs> That's that taste. That's that taste. I remember that. <laughs> Sean, I'm telling you, dude, you were right on. It's dude, not that I bad. Am, a lot of butter on the toast. Little oh, Vegemite. Dude, all right. So let me fucking try this shit out here. Fuck. All right. So I got this Vegemite. <laughs> Foster's, of course, because it's Australian for beer, apparently. That's right. I'm going to drink that. Oh, man. All right. Hey. It's definitely Man, it, salty. It tastes like the vagina that corpse I dug up last night. God <laughs> damn, dude, that's fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, what did you think, Fuck, dude? It, Don't eat it. I mean, I'm not like Don't a huge fan of it, but gross. I will say that that was better than whenever I tried making it. For real? Yeah. yeah hell yeah, dude. <laughs> All right. Well, very <laughs> cool. At first, it wasn't bad. And then right. It, then oh, it, then it, then it was bad. <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm glad I got so, beer. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> a chunk of the we are earth. going to get back to Murder Metal Mayhem talking about Ivan Malapa. We ate our Vegemite. We're drinking Fosters. And you'll have to hear the rest of this oh. when it goes live on Thursday at Hell midnight. Yeah. God CST. damn. Don't do it. See you later. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, Jesus that was Christ, fun. Man. Yeah, well, anybody yeah. listening out there. Like, we did something we've never done give it before. a try, but fuck. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, we did something we've never done before. <laughs> no, fuck. It was interesting. So, all right. The new experiences well, are Thank fun. you, Jenny, for oh, yeah. bringing out the Vegemite for us. And, and the yeah. uh, Fosters and all that stuff. So, oh. very cool. All right. Well, we, uh, we're going like, to keep talking about uh, Australia here. It's just going like to... sticking to my taste buds like my lord, bro. <laughs> 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 I'm going to introduce some Moscato because it washed the taste out of my mouth. I got beer. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you again, Jenny. That was awesome. You can leave it open. All right. Well, we're getting in an Australian frame of mind, and uh, we're going to get to our regularly scheduled program here that we've done that Facebook Live. All right. Tonight, ah, it's a definitely sticking with me, there too. But I, actually, I didn't mind it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would eat it willingly, yeah. but right. I... I wouldn't object to eating it like I had it there. It was all right, but it's I feel a little... like it's one of the things though. Like if you were brought up eating it, right? You'd like, like an acquired taste. Yeah, you're yeah. Like, oh, hell I yeah. didn't think it was too bad. So, Sean, you're <sighs> correct. All right. So Ivan Malat tonight, known as the backpacker murderer, uh, he was brutal, sadism, uh, torturing, imprisonment, murdered two men and five women from 1989 to 93. Some suspect, though, he killed more than that. He picked up young people backpacking in Australia near the Belangelo State Forest along the Hume Highway and did all sorts of sick shit like to them. Brutal shit. Really bad. It's a gruesome story. We thought we would do this one since many of our Australian listeners have been asking about it. Hell so yeah. we hope you guys dig it. All right. Now, Chris, some of these killers we featured before from Australia are brutal as hell. The yeah, Snowtown murders John were pretty Bunk, nasty. Cat, Catherine Knight. I was just telling somebody yeah. about Catherine Knight yesterday. Dude. It was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, fucking Catherine Knight's a mean bitch. Right. So we've done some crazy Australians before, but uh, why do you think that a lot of the true crime fans maybe don't know a lot about the Australian killers? Uh, probably because it is so far away from the United States. I mean, it did get worldwide coverage, right. basically, but... I don't know. I think I feel like like Catherine Knight in general, for the most part, was because it was just one person. It wasn't a string of fucking homicides or whatever. So it just fell off a little bit. And 
I don't know. I, I feel like in the United States, it's just because it is so far away that right. it, it got the coverage, but not as big as it would have if it was in one of the states. Right. I agree. I agree. Um, now, Joey, we know Ivan Malad inspired Wolf Creek. Yeah. Uh, definitely a brutal horror movie. Now, you've seen both of them? Yeah, I got both of them. Uh, I like them a lot. I, uh, Mick Taylor is the character that was created, you know, based on Ivan Malat and the I can't think of the author, the actor who plays him. He's really awesome at it. And it, to be honest, for me, I saw Wolf Creek, and that's what made me want to look into the story of Ivan Malat. Oh yeah, I bet a lot of people did. I, that. Like, I didn't even really know about him. I saw that, and they're like based on true stories, so you got to look it up. And of right, course, of course. Just... it was super embellished, but uh, but it it brought you know my attention to that, and then mm-hmm. also. To be honest, fucking the character of Mick is is like uh, an awesome, um, like a boogeyman for Australia. Like we got Jason and Freddy. True, true. He's one that you know when they did the sequel, it's like I ain't even mad at it because fucking you're bringing him back. He's gonna be brutal, so that's cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah, well worth watching if you haven't seen Wolf Creek or Wolf Creek Two. Uh, now Ivan Malat was born in 1944 in New South Wales, Australia. His father, Stephen, was a Croatian immigrant and laborer. His mother, Margaret, was an Australian who married Stephen when she was only 16. I thought she was 14 when she got married and had started having the kids at 16. Uh, possibly. What I read said 16. So. But had 14 fucking kids. Yeah, right? That's true. Had to start young. Dude, uh, he was like twice her age, too. She was like, yeah. when they got married. He was yeah. like 30-something or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely kind of creepy. Uh, Ivan was the fifth of, as you said, Chris, 14 kids. Holy shit. I can't imagine. Ten of them were boys. Having to deal with that. Yeah, (laughs) ten boys. Wow, what the fuck. They grew up in Bosley Park, which is a suburb of Sydney, before they moved to Liverpool, another Sydney suburb. Uh, There were ten boys, as you said. The police knew them very well. Especially Ivan, who was showing serious antisocial behavior at a very young age. And on everything I watched about the Malat family, they were close and really stuck up for each other for yeah. the most part. Like they were pretty It was the one brother that was all group. against it, but the rest of them were pretty much in line. Well, that's because Ivan knocked up his wife. Right. <laughs> now, Chris, he ended up in a boy's home at age 13, and we've seen this before with murderers that we feature is, you know, like last week with Whitey Bulger, they start early and they get mixed up with the bad crowd and doing some bad shit young. I, I feel like that, yeah, being like in the boys' home, you're going to run into the more shadier characters or whatever and start doing that. But I feel like him and his brothers were going to do this shit anyway. Like, because they committed crimes again, like stealing cars, fucking burglaries, all that. They were going to do it anyway. It didn't matter yeah. if he ended up. And his older brothers are get, gonna lead him into that any too so like he was just born into it basically that's how i feel about it it's fucking nuts. yeah i mean he didn't have much of a chance in the situation but he seemed to be like the worst of the of the bunch for sure so um he ends up in juvenile detention at 17 um you know he's there for theft and then at 19 he's there for breaking and entering he gets 18 months for that, and as soon as he's out, um, Ivan steals a car and gets busted and ends up with two years of hard labor. That's pretty brutal. And I people know knew what hard that, labor is. Especially <laughs> in Australia. Like, yeah, what that's fuck? what I'm saying. Yeah, what they were I, probably pretty tough. Skin and kangaroos and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Putting uh, fosters in the bottom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that scene in the second Wolf Creek where he just fucking annihilates the, all them kangaroos crossing the street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's so rich. It like, is. What the fuck? That's fucked up. Um, so... <laughs> So the people that knew the family said that it was hard to tell one boy from the other because they were all looked a lot alike and they were all fucking mischievous. Ivan used the name of one of his brothers, Bill, and even <laughs> bought a car in his name. What the fuck? He used it for multiple things. Yeah, too. and then later with the Paul Onions yeah. uh, situation. Um, Polly Onions. Hey. <laughs> uh, they were also very tight, as I said, and even later when his brothers suspected that maybe Ivan was involved, they decided to stay out of it and not get involved. So, Joey, as we've seen with other killers we featured, you know, their time in prison, or in this case, juvenile, 
uh, detention actually makes them worse because they're learning from other criminals, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I totally believe that. And from what I saw growing up, like any of my friends that went to juvie came back fucking worse for whatever. Oh, sure. Yeah, they, <laughs> none of them came back like better. Like, yeah, no reform was going on. There. No, it's <laughs> like you're learning fucking way worse shit. Not to mention, I mean, I'm glad I never went to juvie or anything like that because you got all those young motherfuckers that are all troublemakers anyway, so you're more liable to get into shit. True. Because you're young. And and fucking, yeah. Yeah. Hanging so around I'm, with a bunch of delinquents. By the time you know you get to adults and like most prisons and stuff, those people are there to do their time. They're not on bullshit. People that come in on bullshit, like them young kids, they get dealt with real quick. Right. So yeah, I don't know. I'm glad that I never went to juvie, but to, to see like people like Ivan come out of that, of course. What do you do? You fucking learn ways to be a different criminal. Yeah, and my daughter worked at a juvenile detention center up in Minnesota that was like basically a prison because there were murderers in there. Yeah. And uh, she said, "Yeah, pretty, pretty rough oh, I'm deal." Sure. And you know, we've heard stories before and about and like Charles Manson up. and some of those uh, Kemper or not Kemper, um, Panzram. Oh, you know, yeah. going through those uh, orphanages and boys' homes right. and some pretty nasty shit going on. So, yeah, fuck. Now, Ivan does not learn his lesson. In 1967, he's busted again for theft, and at age 22, he gets three years in prison. Uh, so he is, you know, in and out of either juvenile hall or now prison. Uh, April of 71, he's busted for the abduction of two 18-year-old hitchhikers and the rape of one of them. Now, I thought this was crazy. While he's awaiting trial for the charges, uh, his brothers and him commit a <laughs> string of robberies. Like, it was so much for lay and low for a while. And then he fakes his own suicide before he takes <laughs> off to New Zealand for a year. Chris, did you hear anything about him faking a suicide? And what did he actually do? I like, did. But first blow of all, himself the, fucking, up or? the two girls, the one that he raped, he made the other one watch him rape her. And he got off on all the charges and shit because I, I saw somewhere that fucking I heard it on a couple different documentaries or whatever. That basically the defense said that they were lesbians. So there's no way that he would rape her which doesn't make sense so her sexuality would stop him from fucking doing yeah, that that, doesn't make that any don't sense. make any fucking way sense back at then all in australia they're like oh they're lesbians so they're yeah fucking that's right. possible and, that, and, that, yeah. and that, i just i'm just <laughs> like holy shit that's fucking that. cr but yeah you got off on all that shit that's fucked up but as far as the suicide there's this apparently there's this uh cliff or whatever that's known for people <laughs> fucking committing suicide so he just like went there and oh. took his shoes off and left his shoes there. <laughs> no way! And fucking and so everybody just thought he fucking killed himself. Jumped and left his shoes and jumped off. Like wow! That, that, which is okay, dude. Just left his <laughs> shoes. I don't, that don't mean he fucking jumped, man. What the fuck? But, but I guess they thought he was dead because yeah, nobody they did, knew where like, he was. His fucking. I think I feel like his family knew where he was. It's possible. But but there's as apparently a guy were. that lives close to that suicide. Cliff, whatever I can't, I can't remember what they said it was called, but like he got some kind of award because he's saved like over two hundred people from fucking committing suicide. Oh, wow, yeah. like that's fucked up. Because yeah. like people be there, talk him out like over two hundred people. So there, oh that's, there's, there's that. That's pretty cool. Now Ivan returns to New South Wales to visit his sick mother in the hospital, and his brother Boris, who fucking hated him, older <laughs> brother, uh, for having a long running affair with his wife. So I can't blame him. Uh, and she gives birth to a daughter who everyone knew was really Ivan. So yeah, and he was going to kill him too. Like he had a gun and he was ready to yeah, kill him, and kill he thought ass. about it. Um, he didn't want to spend his life in fucking prison, so he he talked himself out of it. Um, but he raised that fucking kid like it was his he own. He did, though. and he really had a dislike for Ivan again for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, he was very, you know, he was probably the only one in the family that didn't stick up for him. Um, Ivan didn't seem to mind much. Uh, he had an affair with other sister-in-laws, uh, two <laughs> others, Maureen, which was his brother Wally's wife. Yeah. I mean, at least his brothers are picking nice, good wives. I shit. guess, I mean... but my God, what the fuck, you know? Um, and then another uh, sister-in-law as well, so... It's He's amazing like, that they stayed close. The till right. I hit it first. <laughs> <Right>. it's, amazing, <laughs> it's amazing that they stayed close with all this shit going on, you know. Hey, might have brought them closer. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> now, when Ivan is being looked at for the backpacker murders, you know, they still were close, and Wally actually agreed to stash some of the items 
that were found in the backpacks and the guns and some other evidence. So they were definitely close like that. Now, Joey, the sister-in-laws that fell for Ivan would say he was different than the other Malats on the surface. He was kind, would open doors for women. He was, you know, good-looking guy, had a good job at his own place. Um, and we've seen this before with serial killers who appear normal on the outside. I mean, we could we could do a whole show on nothing but that topic because yeah. there's so many of them. But and what I, do you think? I, I, feel, I mean, I agree with that, and I feel like... Uh... Almost the way he was is how people viewed John Bunning, too. Like, he was, to his people, he was a respectable guy and, like, you know, probably mannered towards them and all that. And Malat's like that, but to anybody else, you know, it's fucking go time. Yeah, for sure, dude. Pretty fucked up. So Boris calls the cops and has Ivan arrested, uh, and his lawyer is able to get him off on the robbery and kidnap charges, as you said, Chris. Uh, from my research, though, he got away with the rape on a technicality, so I was interested to hear what you had to say about that. Um, he gets a job driving a truck in 75. Uh, he works on and off for 20 years for the Australian Roads and Traffic Authority, which, when I looked it up, uh, sounds kind of like our DOT. Right, right. Um, he worked all over New South Wales, which is, you know, big country so how many people did he kill or a big when he was all over the place though that's (laughs) what i'm saying exactly so perfect job chris a dude that likes you know picking up hitchhikers driving all over the state right the way of the road man you know piss jugs and everything i don't know but i definitely feel like if he was out on the road that much and what he did right where he lived basically right out there he probably did, more he definitely did more somewhere i believe yeah i i would be very very surprised to find out those were the only ones he did ivan was married to a woman named karen who had a little different story than the other women he had the affairs with apparently behind closed doors he was a fucking tyrant he terrorized her uh, he's, she said when he first met her, she was dating his cousin. <laughs> of course. Ivan raped her and then took her home like is it like property, and they, that's how they got married. So that's a pretty fucked up way to meet your husband. Um, she was not allowed to leave the house without permission. She had to show him receipts for any money that she spent. And if she cooked a meal he didn't like, he smashed the plates and threw shit at her Fuck before bitch. beating and raping her. But before all that, though, he was calm and took a few pictures so he could show his mom <laughs> that she fucked up the meal. So what the fuck? Crazy. See this shit, mom? This ain't right. <laughs> now, I told you Joey, to cook it like mom. <laughs> Joey, this is one mean motherfucker, but he's also got a little obsession. Oh, yeah. He fucking loves guns. Like, he really does. Big time. I, yeah. I never saw like exactly what his full collection was, but right. what they confiscated whenever they searched his Quite house. Quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, and every Not picture you see him is holding a gun. Holding a yeah. gun, and like <laughs> the victims, as we talk about them, like their wounds are definitely from fucking plenty of guns. So. Yeah, looking like yes. a Waco compound yeah. and shit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and one of the investigators believed that he murdered after his wife divorced him um, as a way to kind of gain control over his life and kind of exact his hatred toward women uh, and the whole power he did complex. See, he like did a lot of them have that. You know, they got to be in power and all that. So. He did seem to be kind of chill whenever he did have a wife or a girlfriend or something. Right. He wasn't like out there. But as soon as he was single, he's like, fuck it, I'm killing bitches. Yeah. I mean, well, that's because th- he had somebody at home he could rape and beat, though. I right. guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's not a really a wife when he just like grabs yeah. her up from his cousin and <laughs> rapes her and then takes her home. Fucked up. That's just fucked up. Now, Chris, he's also obsessed with his appearance. He didn't smoke and he ate good food. He sounds like a narcissist. And like many of the others we've talked about, kind of a control freak. So he loved his fucking mustache. I know that he did. He like, did. He fucking looking clean in that shit. <laughs> his dude. cars were like immaculate. Yeah, like his house fucking, was really clean. Like yeah. he was all about being Everything very being superficial. But on the inside, he's a fucking raging maniac. You gotta so fucking figure pretty out pretty scary shit. The, you gotta make sure shit's clean all the time because you're burying you're killing people hiding bodies you gotta make sure easy to clean the crime scene yeah Yeah, that's true he got good at it i guess so now's the time we get into the backpacker murders part of this now in case our listeners don't know i actually looked it up what a backpacker is basically (laughs) a 
you know, because we use the term, and I, even when I watched it the first time, I'm like, what exact? I mean, yeah. I know it's obviously somebody with a backpack, but what's the deal with it? And it's basically young tourists that visit Australia and other countries too that wear backpacks, hitch rides, and just kind of you know go and hike and visit <laughs> the, the you know, cheap ass hostels and shit. Yeah. Exactly. Some of them do stay in the cheaper hostels. So Hostel. it's a slang for cheap accommodations. Um, and, you know, that's different than the horror movie franchise hostel, right. which is brutal as fuck. And that would be a good <laughs> voice of dread. Uh, yeah. now most of them come from Europe or the U.S. They said a uh, fucking. Um, now I forgot what the fuck I was talking about. Oh, the the backpackers and shit. Like back then, up until even the mid nineties, yeah. backpacking was considered a safe activity in Australia, and it was also encouraged. Like they had fucking uh, like travel companies and things like that that would cater to that, right? And they would set That's you cool. up a whole fucking backpack fucking tour or whatever. Nice. But nowadays, obviously, like yeah, Oof. probably not a good idea. <laughs> So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, now, at the time of the Belangolo murders, there were several backpackers who were reported missing. In September of 1992, two runners uh, discovered two bodies that were concealed while in the Belangolo forest. Uh, that would be fucked up to just run up on two dead bodies, so for sure. Uh, police would quickly figure out with dental records that these two missing British backpackers Caroline Clark, who was only 21, and Joanne Walters, who was only 22. Uh, they searched the area but did not find any of the others that were missing. So they come up with two. And Joey, October 1993, now a man looking for firewood in Belangelo yeah. comes upon some stuff. What's he find? He finds uh, some bones that are buried under some leaves and stuff. I don't believe he found the the whole by obviously because it had been there for a little bit but they got right. most of it and they were able to link them to uh two other missing backpackers right both 19 years old james gibson and deborah everest and they were um from victoria and Australia. yeah so they were fellow australians you know uh cops are f- f- kind of confused though joey because they find the guy's camera yeah like 75 miles north yeah. so that's backpack so like even not even by his camera too yeah, right? yeah yeah so they they were confused they didn't know what was going on but of course with ivan he's traveling all oh, over yeah, the place so he could them. easily be throwing stuff at this truck stop or out right. the window here and you're never going to find it. At least he's not mailing the knife home. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe that's been done twice. Yeah. <laughs> a month later, the police found the skeletal remains of a German, uh, Simone Schmidt, but there was uh, clothing found by her that wasn't hers. So there's right. weird things going on with this. The clothes actually belonged to the German couple uh, that their bodies would later be found nearby. Uh, the bodies are all fine in an area known as Executioner's Drop. I wonder, is that the place that, where... Yes. I th- no, wait. Because that's a that's kind of a was. cool name. I don't know, like, did he do it there because, because it sounded that, so fucking right? cool? You know, I don't know. Uh, or if it was, it was just a sheer coincidence that the bodies were in this area known as Executioner's Drop. So Now, Chris, the medical examiner found that one of the victims didn't die... Uh, more than one didn't die very quickly oh, no, and were dude. tortured, dude. What the fuck was his deal he with fucking, the spinal cord? He knew what the fuck he was doing because, like, pretty much every victim, like after the autopsy, the spinal cord had been severed with a knife. That's totally fucking. Uh, what the fuck? The fuck am I trying to say? Incapacitate? Yeah. Yeah. It's paralyzed. paralyzed. That's the fucking word I was goddamn looking for. Head on a stick. Fuck. Head on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah fucking like paralyze him and he would just do whatever the fuck he wanted to him like they were sexually assaulted and everything like bad shit and like he would use them for target practice for sure yeah like, that one victim was found with 10 bullet holes in her it's in like her, what the fuck in her that whole spinal head, cord yeah. with yeah. that fucking knife man like yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, fucked that's up. how you know you're getting ready. I mean, if ready. you're into guns and you got a corpse out there in the woods, why not set it up and fire on it? I mean, bit? I like, guess if that's what you're doing. <laughs> but in in Wolf Creek, Joey, they get into that. It's fictional, as you pointed out. Yeah. But do you know how much of it is? How much of the story is is kind of bogus? Maybe twenty five percent of it. Would you say? Yeah, it's it's it's. I thought it was fairly close. Yeah, it's a know? really good movie. And the the fact is, is that everybody that you're talking about in that movie. Everything about it was speculation because 
the one guy he wasn't i don't think he was the guy that got away you know or whatever oh, i don't Paul think i think he too. was completely fictionalized in that i don't think there was a guy who got away but yeah the, but as now. far as two backpackers disappearing right you know i mean none of them were alive to tell the story so how else are you gonna do it that's true obviously you make it a little more brutal for the for this movie's sake right but i i mean in in reality, I mean, it's a brutal fucking story. Yeah, and, it is. And That's... you created a boogeyman, and you have these fucking brutal scenes. Like, yeah, we right. can't say enough. Go check it, Wolf Creek like out if you haven't blood, seen though, it. Like, it's really badass. Like the book in Cold Blood. It's yeah. like that. Like, yeah. you, you take what you got and you make. That's true. That's and Wolf true. Creek's definitely one. It's like okay, you watch the movie and you can enjoy that. Go check out the real story too. Yeah, because it's very interesting, but different. Right. There's some different angles to it. So. Yeah. Now, the police set up a task force to catch what they now think is a serial killer. It was called Task Force Air. I thought that was pretty <laughs> lame. Uh, that's almost a screen door intruder right. ca- caliber yeah. there. Uh, they put out a $500,000 reward for the capture of the murderer, and the New South Wales police and the task force developed a profile. I was pretty impressed with how they did this. And with some software, they narrowed the list of 230 suspects to 32. That's pretty impressive. That's cutting it down pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Uh, hats off to them. Uh, some suspected that there was more than one killer. That was, like, yeah. highly speculated. That. Oh, yeah, because some of the victims were couples, so they were yeah. wondering, how is one person handling this? Plus, they uh, found there was... Cigarette a, butts. Yeah, and the cigarette butts. And no, neither um, Malat or, or the victim yeah. smoked. So. And they also had a couple uh, older cases that they believe that he's probably linked to because the MOs are the same. Oh. But... They, that would also show that maybe there was another one that he was doing it with, you know. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's very possible. It really is. Uh, but that was a thing for quite a while. They were really, you know, trying to figure it out. Um, also, the way they were bound was not always the same. So, again, some differences there. Yeah. I have to say the fact that they were able to narrow it down, though, is very fucking impressive. Awesome, yeah. Uh, Chris, that would be the case, or what would be the case to, uh, to break this thing wide open is Paul Onions. We've talked Paul, about yeah. him. 1990, Definitely. what happens to him, dude? Basically, in 90, uh, he's backpacking, doing right. his thing. He's from Britain. Yeah, he's from Britain. Fucking uh, Malat picks him up, and they're talking, and they're driving, and I guess Malat like, starts getting all belligerent for no reason, like just yelling He and said shit. he wanted to get a cassette. Yeah. And there were cassette tapes right right there, and he told yeah. him that, and he's like, no, they're under the seat. Yeah, so he, he wanted them to fucking... stop so he could get the cassettes. Well, then he started driving all calm, though, too, like not saying anything. That's when he said he wanted to get the shit, because he was just snapping off at first. And then fucking he got out, and uh, Onion saw a gun and a bunch of rope and shit, and he's like, oh, fuck right, this. Right, I'm going to die. Like, I'm going to die, and he fucking jumped out of the damn car and running into traffic yeah and, and he shit, was basically. like weaving he was smart and fucking because Malati knew had a gun yeah, so he's he was running away him. he's like was chasing him and shit on the highway this yeah. is going on this dude fucking gets his van to stop and he just opens up the side of the door and jumps in that bitch yeah, like he's got a fucking god gun thank god that lady picked him up because yeah. he would have been dead man so I mean, that was pretty and, scary shit yeah, so it wasn't good for fucking Malad at that point, like getting noticed because they he rec- he knew the vehicle, what he looked like, and everything. Right, and other so the, people saw him too. Yeah, so the three years later, he saw some breaking news about murders and type of vehicle and shit, and he's just like, "I need to talk to the cops because right. that's well, the fucking yeah." And he did talk to the cops right after it happened, yeah. but they, they didn't were, do anything. They didn't about really it, know right? anything. Had no idea it was connected. Obviously, and going back to Wolf Creek, that was so. Onions is the is the guy that's in wolf creek but he is uh hooked up with two other backpacking girls for the movie's sake oh okay w- which he was by himself here in this uh thing but also in the movie he goes and tells them you know what happened afterwards the authorities and they go and try to find mick taylor and oh. he, they don't find him so he's like gone you know okay. where in reality ivan malat gets caught but right, yeah. right, yeah. I mean, they, they do take some liberties, but right, yeah, it's, right. it's cool though. I heard that it, like in the real life thing, like looking in the rear view mirror. I can't remember the lady's name that was driving the van, but looking in the rear mirror after they took off, Malad just like turned around and walked casually away, like nothing fucking happened. Right, like, right. Just walking back to my car, no big fucking fucked deal. Up. That's fucked up. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, uh, pretty pretty crazy that he contacts him three years later, yeah. and that's how this starts to unravel. 
as they get a little bit of a description. Paul uh, Onions was told his name was Bill. So, again, he's using the brother's name uh, again. <laughs> Dickhead. Yeah, and the vehicle <laughs> would point to the police, uh, point the police to the home of Ivan Malat, who realized <laughs> they were able to match up the vehicle and the color and stuff because yeah. they had the description. And Malat had recently sold it, so that definitely looked suspicious. So they figure out, uh, you know, that Malat was not working also on the days that these went down. These different uh, incidents they believed he was involved with. He definitely, definitely uh, fits the profile. And people who knew him uh, told the cops about his gun obsession. So they right. know all about that. And, and they also they broke. also know him because he's a fucking piece of shit. And he's been doing this shit his whole life. His whole fucking life. And they also brought back the two girls, the one that got raped and the other one. Yeah. And they gave them a, like a photo lineup of so many people and were instantly like, that's the fucking guy right there. Right. Right. Like, so that, that, that helped out catching him too. Oh yeah. And they had Paul onions, of course, verify. Yeah. Right, so they right. had the few witnesses. That's true. Uh, they had a few things come together to help make this thing a done deal. Um, but you know, the Paul onions part of it is, is really a huge one. Yeah. Um, and you know, the fact that he's able to ID him as well as those ones that got away, that's awesome. Uh, May of 1994 and 50 cops surrounding <laughs> the house. Surrounding that's crazy. Uh, of Ivan Malat arrested on robbery and weapons charges related to the incident with Paul Onions. Uh, they found quite a few weapons. But like you, Chris, I was kind of wishing you'd get like a rundown, <laughs> you know, of what was yeah, there. What like, else you be have? interested. They mentioned a few things like the 22 rifle the ruger that he was uh, using in most of the murders they believed uh, but there were plenty of others as you pointed out i thought it was funny that the cops beat on his door and like announced to the cops and everything he didn't answer the door or whatever and he just said i thought it was a joke like you got <laughs> fucking 50 cops around in your house right? guns drawn motherfucker exactly <laughs> like, come on you're not going anywhere <laughs> Um, so yeah, so he, uh, he's definitely, uh, got a lot of shit there. The pistol, the Bowie knife that they believe was the one he used to sever the spinal cords. That's fucking sick. Uh, police also find many items that belong to the murder victims. That doesn't look very good. Nope. And a search of the Malat, uh, of his mom's house and five of the brothers also came up with some of the shit. Yep. So they were all hiding stuff for Brother Ivan. So. They did fucking all went into all the houses at the same time, too, so nobody could get alerted. Right. Like, they all went each house same time. Yeah, go. that's smart, because they would have obviously told the rest, right? Right. So, that, yeah, that's, that's very, very smart of them to do that. Um, now, Joey Malat really doesn't have a legit excuse of how he came in to possess this stuff, so... Yeah. What is he really going to do, I mean, at this point? I mean, there's not much he can do. And uh, as far as them finding, like, stuff and all in every house of his relatives and shit, I'm sure he was fucking swiping this shit off people and fucking just, like, dropping gifting it, it to yeah. them. Like, oh, here, you can have that. Like, I'm, I don't even think they were hiding it. It was probably just like, oh, here's a new camera. Here's a fucking whatever, you know? Yeah. Well, there was like, that one picture of, the, of his girlfriend or whatever wearing a shirt that was owned by yeah, one of the victims. Yeah. Like... <laughs> the fuck dude so that's fucking stupid i remember like ted bundy used to do that fucking steal the jewelry and fucking give it to give his, it to girls yeah. right right it's yeah it's fucked up now the uh, trial begins march of 1996 after a bunch of crap with malat <laughs> firing his attorney hearings to see if he's fit to stand trial uh, his defense attorney would claim there was no firm proof that Ivan committed the murders and would shift the blame to other members of the family, namely Richard. <laughs> that's fucked up since he looked a lot Bill. like Ivan. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Richard and Wally uh, were also tried for weapons and drugs and stolen items uh, that they found during the investigation. But I didn't see how much time they did, but I did say they were uh, arrested for right. it. Uh, there were 145 witnesses that took the stand, and several members of the Malat family would testify for Ivan. So I'm not surprised. They were tight. Uh, Ivan himself even took the stand, which isn't too common anymore. Yeah. No, uh, You can really. watch that, too. It's on YouTube. Oh, I, that's cool. I, had, I hadn't seen that. I'll have to do he, that. He did a, also, they did like an interview right before he died, too. Like It's short as fuck, but still kind of cool. Oh, that's stuff. cool. Yeah, I definitely want to see that. Uh, he was... 
found guilty, of course, Chris, and given a life sentence plus seven of the seven murders, and then he adds, uh, you know. I don't know how many years he got for Paul Haynes, but he got, he got time for Paul Haynes. I mean, he's not getting out anyway. He's got seven life sentences right. no parole. <laughs> fucking, he's not getting out. But And then he also got a little, he got time for the fucking rape and kidnapping of the two girls, too, and I don't yeah, remember Yeah, they was. did add a little time, and they, they said they also added time for the Paul Onions episode. But, yeah, like you said, seven murders, I mean. Yeah, you're not getting you know. out, like, at all. Now, it was fucked up. I had read or listened to maybe on a podcast, and then I remembered seeing it somewhere else, but that, you know, they were able to tell the, you know, medical examiner that these victims had been sexually, you know, raped. Right. And then they were male and female yes, that, that were yeah, raped. There was. So uh, one of the... <coughs> investigators or maybe one of the psychologists that talked on one of the docs I watched said he believed that Malat was bisexual and that he was the one doing that. But that could be another reason why maybe there was somebody helping him. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> you fucking know it's knows, fucking dude. crazy. Um, I did see, though, that he would try a prison escape a year later, but failed. <laughs> Uh, the guy he tried to escape with didn't fare too well. He was hanging in his cell the next day. Uh, Ivan was moved to the Goldburn Prison in New South Wales. Uh, and, of course, he would file appeals for various reasons, but none of them went very far. Uh, in 2001, though, he's moved to the Supermax section of the prison, and he was given a toaster and a TV, <laughs> and people went fucking crazy, man. Wow. Yeah, he was probably for his Vegemite. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Fuck. I, like I said, I was impressed. I thought it would be worse. Uh, I liked Vegemite. I'm saying it. Um, he did have visitors over the years, but, you know, obviously mostly family. Yeah. Um, he would always say that he was innocent, so he never admitted to any of this stuff uh, to anybody. Oh, he's never, dude. To. Like, No, he's just like closed Even in his, like, uh, in the courtroom and shit when he's on the stand, he's just like, no, I don't even know. No, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, that's fucked up because, you know, you always wonder, you know, you see people get arrested for things they didn't do yeah. you know i mean it it sure points to him but you know you always have to have that in the back of your mind um his sister-in-law carol talks to him or talked to him often and believes that he had nothing to do with it she did come across as a bit odd and even jenny was like why would you talk to your brother-in-law in prison like on a regular basis like that's just it just seemed kind of weird like who would talk to their brother-in-law that they were all Ivan's bitches. I guess, but it just seemed kind of odd. Like you said, I wondered, was something going on with those two? I don't know, you know. He's like, hey, bro, you taking care of your girl for me while I'm in here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> fucked up. Come on, up. man. Come on. Give me that so, money. You know, she definitely comes across weird. Um, police said there was, you know, still a few backpackers yeah. that were missing, so they wanted to really try to see if they could figure out if it was him. Uh, some of the New South Wales police interviewed uh, on the docks did seem to think that was the case. So, like we've I been mean, saying, I, yeah, kind I, of I agree. Would think he fucking definitely, you know, definitely would be your number one guy to look for. Any murders, even closely related to these, and very distinctive with the severing of the spinal cord yeah. and and the gun thing, and just yeah, and the way he was, you know, grabbing him up off the off the highway hitchhike. I mean, at an early age, he fucking got caught for kidnapping two backpackers yeah. and raping one so. exactly at a young yeah. age yeah now chris in 2006 i mean gets a little crazy yeah, he cuts fucking, off his fucking finger goddamn man. finger with a fucking they said a plastic knife dude. yeah <laughs> like <laughs> how much fucking effort does that take oh my to fucking god cut that your would finger hurt off with a plastic knife ah. it's like he's pissed off because they fucking wouldn't give him a peel or whatever yeah give and so he's like, oh, I'm getting my appeal. No, you're peeling your flesh off, dude. Yeah, and he was going to mail it to the court. Yeah, like, they what the sew fuck? It, they couldn't sew it back on and shit, dude. <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ. Over the years in prison, though, he was known to swallow razors and fucking pieces just of all, metal. Just and dumb shit. And they, and they wanted a right? pl he wanted a PlayStation so bad that he just fucking quit eating for so long he lost 50 fucking pounds. Yeah, nine-day hunger Over, strike. He never got a fucking PlayStation No, he either, didn't. Dude. No, they were like, fuck you. We learned Harold Schechter got his PlayStation 5, though. That's right. Fucking yeah, hell. Harold was talking about that. Yeah, they gave his ass an Atari, man. <laughs> yeah, they didn't get shit, <laughs> 
Uh, he needed to be a real pain in the ass, it seems like, all the fucking time. So. Dude, what, yeah, what, fucking dickhead. <laughs> right? Now, Joey, there was some talk about maybe others that helped him, as we've talked about. We mentioned the cigarette butts, and, um, you know, with all these brothers, you know, what do you think is the is the likely uh, case on that? Well, as we know, uh, you know, his brother ends up also committing homicides. Yeah. Um, no, it's his nephew, or his right? nephew, nephew. His nephew. So it's still in the family. So, I mean, to to think that any of his brothers or even his mom, to be honest, I mean, I don't know, because they stuck together so hard. Right. Who knows what they were involved in and knew about, you know, each individually one or maybe all together. Right. Um, but there was, you know, as we talked about earlier with the, with the cigarette butts at the scenes and there were just questionable things that made you think, oh, there had to have been somebody else there. Right. But it's also like, well, Ivan Blot was also just a fucking crazy motherfucker, and he'll take care of a motherfucker if he wanted to or yeah. two. So. Especially with a gun. I yeah, mean, he I, could make two I fully people. believe any of the, 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 the ones that he was convicted of anyway. Like, he could have done any of those by himself, yeah. especially with a gun, like he said. Yeah. And they show that in the movie, like him just like casually, like, okay, you're getting away, and then just fucking snipe him. And I, I feel like that wasn't too exaggerated. No, I don't think so at all. I don't think so at all. Now, in 2019, Malad is diagnosed with esophageal cancer and dies from it the same year. And apparently he told his family he wanted the state to pay for his funeral, but the state cremates his ass and took the money from his prison account to pay for the expenses. Fucking I right. thought that was pretty awesome. Why not? I don't know if they do that here, but they should. I mean, that's bullshit. Uh, Malat would, uh, the family, though, would find another one of them yep. in a legal fucking mess. I couldn't <laughs> believe this shit, Chris. <laughs> His great nephew, Matthew Malott, whose name was changed to Miller so the family could avoid the whole thing. Right, and he legally changed his name back to Malott. He's like, yeah, it's my uncle, bro. He told like, all the people that he met about he was the you know the nephew of, of uh, the, the great Ivan Malott. And he would talk about <laughs> him like he was his hero and shit. It was pretty fucked up. And he also has this buddy of his, Cohen Klein. These two were only 17 and there's a buddy of theirs who just turned 17. So they take him out to the Belangolo Forest. They got some weed. They got some beer. Going to have a good time. Well, sounds like a good time to me. Fuck. Matthew <laughs> wants to go visit some of the, the sites where his uncle murdered people. murdered people and raped them and stuff. So that sounds like a fun evening, you know. <laughs> and so Matthew, uh, they stop and he gets out of the fucking car and he gets a fucking battle axe. Like a double-sided fucking battle axe. Like you go see in a fucking Viking movie battle axe, yeah. And he fucking kills this kid, and they videotape this shit with a phone. And they get in a whole bunch of shit, obviously. They get yeah. busted easily because they're fucking 17 and dumb. Um, the kid had it on his phone, yeah. so, you know, they got all this evidence. Really brutal, though, this poor kid. Um, Matthew got 43 years, and his friend Cohen got 32. So... Definitely yep. runs it in the family, man. Like, the Malots. Could you imagine <laughs> being that person, though? Like, fuck yeah, my uncle was a fucking serial killer. I want to yeah. do the same goddamn. That's fucking, your brain's fucked up, Exactly, dude. dude. Yeah, not right at all. Um, so I mentioned the movie. We've mentioned the movie Wolf Creek. Definitely good to watch. There's two of them. I can't believe you've never seen that, Chris. We're going to watch that. That's really wicked. So both yeah, of them were it. good, I thought. So. All right, guys, anything you want to add to our discussion of Ivan Malat? We we started it out with some Vegemite and toast, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the consensus was Chris thought it was disgusting. It's not uh, good. It's not good. Jenny didn't like it. Joey, what, what did you? I was all right with it. I don't. I wouldn't need to have it again anytime soon. But... I I actually it's like Malort. Yeah. I <laughs> I think I could see acquiring a taste for it, but yeah. my first impression was that it was very good. And that both Rick and Sean were dead on. Yeah. Lots of butter yeah. and heating it up. Score. So I ate the whole piece of toast with it on there. And I know that uh, Jenny, I think, spit hers out. So right. we had some different reactions. And, and it was cool. And, and washing it down with some Fosters and having a good time um, talking I, about Australian I did think, murdering. Uh, uh, I did think, though, that like after they found the 
first few bodies and they started searching the forest that i thought it was pretty cool they brought in a uh, cadaver dogs from the united states that were did a uh, search for civil war burial sites and oh shit. nice oh, wow. so they had like legit like cadaver dogs doing that shit that they brought over to australia to search yeah i the think woods the police shit. did an amazing job with yeah. this case man really i mean to the way they were able to narrow it down like they did but um something i'll add to it yeah uh, so Richard Malott, they interviewed him, and I used his his fucking part of what he was saying for one of my songs in the Gormonger song because it was just so hilarious. <laughs> so I was going to fucking repeat it. And what it's pertaining to is uh, Ivan had a younger sister, uh, Shirley Swire, and her and Ivan had been sleeping with each other since she was in her 20s, like back in the 50s. Jesus. So, like, total incest. Like, right, right. That was a real thing. So, this this British guy is interviewing Richard Malott, okay. talking to him about this. And I was gonna I was gonna play the clip, but I forgot I chopped it all up for my song. So it's like, oh. Anyway, I'm gonna say it in the two different guys' voices terribly. Okay. But so you guys could you know hear the the, the exchange. But this is an interviewer talking to Richard Malott about Ivan, and he's like. Why would you think that was possible? They're two people. Because for most people, a brother and a sister having sex would be terrible. Would it? Would you think those two guys over there, is that any nicer? Yes. Even if they're strangers, two blokes, is that any nicer, two blokes doing it? (laughs) To me, what's the difference, one or the other, whether you do it with your sister or you're made up the road? And that's what Richard Malott said. (laughs) <laughs> I, wow. I, I remember Family that now, dude. There. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's some fucked up shit. Wow. Yeah, I watched a docu a documentary about a, a miss a cold case up in the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, and those people up there. I mean, that's some like wow, some shit like this. Some wrong term yeah, shit. for sure. <laughs> and one of them's uh, name was uh, Brooks, but it was Bubba Brooks. Oh shit! And we were dying because it was in Kentucky. It's like very possible that they could be part of the, you know, the Brooks clan up there in uh, finley you know so dude let me tell you this real fast that's so fucking funny that you just said that i should i don't even know if i should say <laughs> it, but uh one of our listeners from the 419 nice told me this about one of our other listeners but she said my mom just went on a date with some guy from finley that dated the mom of the girl with the lip ring from sugar <laughs> babe <laughs> I had to like no way. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh man! Four one nine. Oh sugar my god, babe. dude! What nice. the fuck? Yeah, I was Four like, oh my god. We do a brutal rewind on your relationship. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> and she's a listener of our show, so she heard me say that. So I hope you're not pissed off. That shit was no, funny as that's hell. That's great. That's great stuff. <laughs> Oh shit! I uh, yeah, it just it sounded like a, all of a sudden a noise. Uh, like ah. I thought something happened, but it looks Nothing like happened. we're okay. All right, I did my research with uh, some really good documentaries out there. There was a good episode on sixty minutes Australia that had a lot of interviews with the Malat family and others that were involved in the case. It's very very good. Um, and oh, even though it's not a U.S. case, there is a lot of stuff out there, so you can learn if you just want to. YouTube it, and plenty of stuff even just there, if that's all you did. Uh, Next week, though, uh, we're going to be doing a crazy feature on two rich kids, Chris. Uh, Leopold Leopold and Loeb. Loeb. Hell yeah. Nathan Leopold, Richard Loeb, actively known as Leopold and Loeb. Uh, 1924. Chris, we're going back to the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, we love doing that. This is going to be an old fucking case. Yeah. They take this poor 14-year-old kid and for no other reason than to... Yeah, just because. Be, just because. They no wanted reason. to show they could commit the perfect crime. Yeah, no So reason. they abduct this 14-year-old boy. That didn't work out for him. No. In Chicago, they kill him, Hell and yeah. it's a thrill kill. And we talked about that with uh, Harold, Harold. Schechter. Uh, when we interviewed him, we asked him about Leopold and Loeb. So that'll be part of that. That's going to yeah. be cool. Um, and it's a it's an interesting case, and if you're not familiar with it, you definitely will be when we do that one next week. So definitely looking forward to that episode 148 as we inch closer Oof. to the big 150. And guys, we're doing 
a good one for the 150th, yeah. Joey. What did we decide again? Columbine. Hell yeah. Some Columbine. We also talked to Harold Schechter about that. Yep. Uh, so that'll be cool for the 150th. So very good. Well, Joey, any good uh, page a day stuff for us? You always have some good material. You know, I've only got... That's for, that's for metal. I, I only got two today, and they're both short. But as Slater once said, it's quality, not quantity, man. All right, so the first one I got is about um, Claudia Sassi. This is a 57-year-old lady, and she's at her, her late husband's funeral. All of a sudden, she hears a voice coming from the casket, and she just loses her shit, collapses, has oh a heart God. attack, and dies on the spot. Jesus. So this gentleman, Jacques de Patron, he's a ventriloquist friend of her husband's. He later tells the police he thought the mourners would find it uplifting to hear Let Me Out coming from his coffin. Oh, my God. (laughs) What the fuck? That's so fucked. All right. So that one was good. Okay, now this one's awesome as fuck. So Paige Day, once again, thank you. Yeah, This was a case I had never heard, and I was like, holy fuck. So uh, this is called The Bus Ride from Hell. So, so it's like Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Uh, Tim McLean, he's sleeping peacefully on a Canadian Greyhound, and it's going from Edmonton, Alberta, to Winnipeg, Manitoba. And this is July 30th of 2008. All of a sudden, another passenger named Vincent Lee, L.I. Lee. Vincent Lee, he moves from the front of the bus, sits down next to McLean, and then begins viciously stabbing him in the neck and the chest with a large knife. Jesus. For no reason. Just starts fucking cutting him up. (laughs) When the bus driver pulled to the side of the road to let the other passengers out, Lee decapitated McLean and displayed his head to the passengers (laughs) as they watched horrified from the side of the road. He then began cannibalizing McLean. Uh, it lasted about five hours. The bus driver and two other passengers initially tried to subdue Lee, but the extreme violence of the attack forced them to retreat. They ultimately ended up barring him in the bus using a crowbar and a hammer while they waited for the police to get there because they were in a remote area. Right, right. Oh, my God. So Lee, he's he's still trapped in the bus when the police get there, and he tries to escape by uh, driving the bus away, but the driver had activated the emergency immobilizer <laughs> so he couldn't move. Uh, <laughs> Uh, special negotiators and a heavily armed tactical unit were summoned to the scene. And the standoff between Lee and the police lasted until 1.30 in the morning, oh during God. which time Lee continued to pace the bus and consume parts of McLean's body. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, <laughs> He was dude. captured shortly after attempting to escape through a broken window. Parts of McLean's body were found in his pockets, and others were retrieved from the bus. Oh, my God. He was arraigned at a nearby courthouse, where his only response consisted of pleas for someone to kill him. At his trial the following spring, a judge determined that Lee was not criminally responsible for the killing. A psychiatrist testified that Lee had heard God's voice telling him to kill McLean, who was a force of evil intent on executing him. He was eventually discharged from psychiatric care unit on February 10th, 2017. What? So he's out on the street. He's out on the street. Oh God my damn. God. But yeah, that's a brutal one. So and where thank was you. that again? That was in uh, Canada. Oh, okay. Uh, Alberta Jesus. to Winnipeg. But fuck. Page a day. Thank Nasty you for those. Page a day. Holy Jesus. shit. That's fucking brutal. That dude. is brutal. Well, we've definitely done our fair share of murder tonight. I hear that familiar music. It's got to be CK ready to throw down. So, Joey, what the fuck do we need to do? Let's get on metal now. Known the world over as the master of metal, the crusher of posers, and murder metal mayhem's knower of all things metal, hailing from Wild Man Street in Danbury, Connecticut, standing at six feet of brutal punishing madness, weighing in at 220 pounds of poser pulverization. The one, the only, toughest bastard on the planet, Chris C.K. Comex! Well, don't get much more fucking metal than C.K., man. Shit, no shit. Fuck yeah, we're in metal. Uh, of course, uh, we got C.K. on with us. How you doing, buddy? Um... Got some issues, but I'll, I will explain um, the reason why Joey is doing his friend's band um, this weekend. I'm 
kind of taking a, a break and just hanging out for um yeah you're just gonna sit one. back and sometimes commentate you just need to relax man and let joey take the murder or the metal segment this week he picked a band and you're just gonna be here with us but you're just not yeah, doing I, that I, part I, of it, so. I, I gave him the steering wheel for the week there, there we you go. go and and you're gonna explain Jesus, joey take the wheel <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna explain what happened uh when we yeah. get to mayhem so that's our listeners have to keep listening to find out why CK's on the sidelines and Joey taking center stage. Joey, who do you got for us tonight? I feel like tonight? that fucking that dumbass kid on the register while the fucking trainer's watching you over your back. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, like, I'm going to fuck something up. I'm going <laughs> to fuck something up. Shit. But uh, I, am, I am doing a Lost Classic. Which I also have a Lost Classic because I was trying to keep it alive, so we're going to have two this week. Fucking we're right. Gonna double team that. <laughs> Hell gonna, yeah. Gonna, Tag team that we're bitch. Double team that bitch. Hell yeah, yeah. Just, it took the words right out of my mouth. Yep. Uh, I sorry, dude. My I, bad. I didn't notice it until okay. I was looking at the notes just now that you had one too. I was like, whatever, we can do a couple. No, that's whatever. awesome. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get started. So uh, Joey doing the metal segment this week um, for CK, and as we're doing Australian fucking everything on this episode, from the beer to the Vegemite to the Killers to the bumper music and karaoke and the karaoke, uh, I decided to do disentomb. Fucking right. Uh, Fuck yeah, dude. Dis and Tomb is a, a brutal death metal band. Um, they are... They kick ass. Yeah, fucking super heavy. In my opinion, they're one of the heaviest bands that there ever has been. In my, That's my opinion. But they, uh, they're they from Brisbane, Queensland, in Australia. Now, they started out as Wounds of Decay, and three of the members were in that band, and they all switched over to a band called uh, Cadaverine. Cadaverine. Nice. And then in 2009, they shifted ways again and and created Disentomb. So in Disentomb, um, or in 2009, Disentomb put out a demo with two tracks. Now, the, the lineup has stayed the same minus the bassist. So uh, starting with their demo, they had Jordan James on vocals, Jake Wilkes on guitar, Tom Pox Joyce on bass and Henry Sison on drums, and Sison, Wilkes, and James were all in uh, Wounds of Decay before. Nice. So the same lineup uh, went on with their first full length, which was Sunken Chambers of Nephilim, which that came out on Amputated Vein Records from over in Asia. Uh, that album, I mean, as a debut, the people that got the 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 demo, I mean, that was already crushing, and people right, were excited. Only just the two songs. Yeah, but like, whenever this, that album this, dropped, it was like poof. This this thing that sucks about like a lot of these, um, at least all the heavier, um, Australian bands is the distribution and the support. That it's like. They get no no record label support. The record right. labels are on are so minuscule. Yeah. Right. Um, you know that sucks because these bands are all awesome. You know. Yeah. The only one, the only one being that gets you know a good push is Harlot. Yeah. Right. But I mean, to me though, in what I do and in the underground scene, like every label they've dropped an album on is huge to me though. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Bob just saying like in general. Right. Right. You know, yeah. Those, those labels are, are 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 pretty good labels, but for yeah, it's a true independent, and it, that's yeah. what oh, makes yeah. it cool D- to the guys D-Y-I. that dig that kind of shit. And, and DIY, which is you know always cool. Yeah. yeah. So that was their first album. Uh, so they wait five years, and they put out their second album, Misery, which came out on New Standard Elite <clears throat> from out here in the United States, which is probably the biggest underground. It's, one, it's a huge underground label. label yeah. Uh, I mean, to me, Misery, their second album, is, is God tier, one of the heaviest albums I've ever heard in my life. And uh, the only lineup change they did change the basis, and they got um, Jim Parker. So he was Does the on singer there. play, or is he just a singer? He's just vocalist. Okay. I, di- I didn't see a picture of him or right. watch a video, but I listened to him, and they were fucking yeah. sick, man. So in 2015. Yeah, me too. 
So in 2015, after coming out with the Misery album, they actually did three European tours, three U.S. tours, an Asia tour, and a bunch of Australian shows. They hit 250 shows in 45 countries that year. God damn, which, dude. Yeah. That's fucking all over that, the fucking place. Yeah. Yep. So 2015, they were uh, they were on the New Standard Elite tour, which was fucking amazing, and it had Cerebral Refusion, uh, Delusional Parasitosis, Embodied Torment, Euphoric Defilement, Inherit disease and uh crypt infection so oh, yeah. that it sounds was pretty like a big. disney lineup there. right ah. and, and then in 2016 <laughs> uh they start getting a little bit bigger because now they're, they're a little more known with that album plus touring so much and so now they're on tour with black dahlia murder and fallujah wow uh for, that, uh, that's a good tour yep and those, then, those, those both those bands are you know bigger everybody knows it. Yep. yeah right so then uh Just for what we like in 2019, they put out their third full length, which happens to be their newest, and I believe Pete played a track off that one. Yeah, that's music. coming up, yeah. But their third album is called The Decaying Light, which this one came out on Unique Leader Records. Uh, again, they changed the basis. Now they have Adrian Capaletti, um, but still just brutal as fuck. And putting out that album, they got on the Blood Hunting North America tour with Visceral Disgorge and Signs Fucking of right. the Swarm. But then, of course, COVID hit, so that was the, the last right. thing you heard of it. However, uh, Disentomb, they have released a couple singles this year for their upcoming album that they're working on. So definitely excited for another one. When they did the Misery album, like I said, it took them five years in between that one. And they right. said that they rewrote and just fine-tuned shit over exactly and over the and way over. they yeah. fucking want. And yeah. to me, like... The, the the sound of the music, the artwork, everything about the album like just came out to be almost perfect. So that was cool. Um, they also, I'll just say one last thing too. They kind of uh, started their own kind of subgenre, and when people heard this, they called it sloom metal because oh, it, because it had a doom feel to it, which is kind of like what's unique to them over other bands, which I think makes it a little heavier too. Kind of, right, kind of oh, got yeah. that sludgier feel to yeah, it. Yeah, when it's it, slower, yeah. it gets heavier like that. Which is what I dig about them. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. So that was Disentomb. So thank you guys for listening to the metal Fuck section. Yeah, that's Fucking cool, right, dude. dude. I'm going to do a Lost Classic real quick. And, and CK's, CK's got, got one. one yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. My Lost Classic for today was uh, Cancer, Death Shall Rise. And oh, nice. hell yeah. That's that was uh, 1991 on Restless Records. Uh, James Murphy was on guitar on that album. Brutal. Um, it was recorded by Scott Burns at Morris Sound Studios. And oh, my yeah. favorite song, I mean, it's it's a little cliche, but Hung, Drawn, and Quartered, which had Glenn Benton on guest vocals. Fucking right. Too. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And, and, and a lot of the cancer stuff is available um, physically still. Yeah. Um, you, could, you could streamline it. I mean, streamline it. <laughs> you could stream it. Yep. Yeah. But, um, but it, they're available as imports. Hell yeah. And CK, you got a lost classic. I got which, which I think this album gets overlooked a lot. I love this album. Uh, it's because, badass. <laughs> because this this band, their debut was so fucking phenomenal. Right. Um, I think this one got swept under the rug a little bit. Yeah, but and I think um, after Newstead went to Metallica, I think a lot of people yeah, were like, "Oh, they're not going to be able to do that. anything," because he's pretty you know, dominating just, in the mix. On uh, on Doomsday oh, yeah. for sure. So to lose him, and I'll I gotta say, man, Flotsam and Jetsam has always had <coughs> incredible bass players. Yeah. Every bass player yeah. I've heard on every album Definitely. is fucking amazing. So Newstead, not um, the only one, but he was the one that went to Metallica. But it was um, the second album, No Place for Disgrace. Yep. I just I just think they took what what. The melodies and everything from the first album. Um, a lot of the songs on, on the first album were like eight, nine minutes. Um, right. And it, it just streamlined it. And it was like a tighter... The songs were a lot tighter and had a, a little bit better feel. Would you think, is that as, the one with the Elton John oh, song on damn it? Damn right, yeah. Saturday Night's All Right. Yeah, uh, I was yeah, like, I, I don't know about right. that one. It's kind of weird, but it's cool. But I, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent. CK, what about you? I, 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 I you liked think it? it's a good cover. Yeah, okay. I, I do too. All right. But that's it is cool. funny because um, it's not a band that you would think a thrash band. No, would and that's why they did it, yeah. and it's cool that they did it. I think because it's definitely different and very unique, 
and shows off and, their versatility because those guys are really, really right. talented. And it's a song that you didn't think a metal band would cover. No. Right? <laughs> yeah, just like but, a um, band that Low 12 used to play with up in Chicago, uh, Vesicant, they used to do Don't Stop Believing, and yeah. it was fucking amazing <laughs> well, because it'd be like halfway through it before you even figure out that's what it is, yeah. you know. It was pretty but, cool um, playing did. like hardcore metal. Yeah, they were good. They, um, because they were signed to Electra, after they did go back and re-record right the album, um, all the way through. And Metal yeah. Blade put it out. It was like maybe six, seven years ago. Right. They re-recorded it, um, and it's even. I, I like the re-recordings. I don't know. It's it's kind of a toss-up. Right. The, the re-recordings a little bit heavier. But I always like the appeal of the first recording because you know yeah. that's what I originally heard. Yeah. Right, right. But um, check Very it out. Cool. All right, so we got two lost classics tonight. All right, well, I hear that music, so we're going to be talking about what kind of metal we've been listening to lately. But before that, a little six six fucking six. <laughs> Hell yeah, some six six fucking six. Six six six. And that means we're gonna talk about what we've been listening to lately and uh go with you, Chris. What you been jamming over there at the nation? Uh I know it's a mix, but you know what's something some, that comes to mind. Listen to some Beck, some fucking dry kill logic, that fucking uh uh Cotard syndrome though that Cash was talking about though. I've been jamming the shit out of that. Uh, Fear Factory, fucking all kinds of shit. Fuck yeah, that's cool. Fuck fucking, yeah, dude. That Cotard syndrome, though, dude. Yeah, also sitting by the fire the other night, like when I shut my my fucking shit off on yeah. my phone. Fucking, I was like, holy fuck, this is dope as fuck. <laughs> Hell yeah. What about you, CK? What have you been listening to? Uh, some Bison Team, um, like Chris, some um, Fear Factory. Fucking right. Uh, been going back into the back catalog a little bit for them. Um, some Sabbath. Nice. And um, some Byzantine, um, which I'll... Next I'll week, some Byzantine. I was starting to prep for it, yeah, which I was supposed to do this week, but I'm doing next week. That's right. I got my but, Byzantine um, yeah. shirt on tonight just because. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love that. those guys. Joey, what about you, man? What you been jamming? Uh... One of my favorite EPs of all time. I was listening to uh, Sepultura, Dead Embryonic Cells. Nice. Nice. Fuck yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. Old school. Uh, I ordered, I was listening to it, streaming it, but I had to order this album. Uh, Green Jelly came out with a new album called Gar- Garbage Band Kids. The fuck out of here. No way. And I mean, it's got like dudes from Trailer Park Boys on. It's got Weird Al's on a song. With oh, them. wow. Uh, Kitties on a song. The like, fuck out of here, dude. Yeah, they got a whole bunch of fucking guests on it. And they're I'm like, definitely oh, cool. checking this shit and, out. And the, ar- and the artwork is fucking done by the guy in, who did the 80s Garbage Pail Kids who ended up passing away later on. But, oh, wow. So the artwork's fucking sick. So I saw that and I was like, I'm oh, fucking no ordering right. that. Yeah, that's cool. You know, so I was jamming the, right. the leaks for that. And then in the car right now, I got Minstrel Discon Hell yeah. Um, Nice. Indonesia. From Indonesia. Fuck yeah. Right. yeah. Very, very cool. Um, I've been listening to Byzantine like CK. And then here lately, I went on a fucking tear and I'm still on it with um, the uh, decapitated stuff. I went and ordered Kill the Cult. I really like that album. And I've been jamming that in my car. And then I went backwards and started listening to some of the old decapitated. And I found this rare DVD, CK. It's from an old. A lineup performance, a live, oh, really? full live performance, oh, and yeah. then interviews and stuff. And it's in English. So um, that's cool. Oh, yeah, dude. yeah, I ordered it. I, I, it's supposed to be here on the 17th. So I'm pretty excited about that. But yeah, those guys, awesome. so sick, all the different versions of them. But man, like that Spheres of Madness and some of that old yeah. shit is so fucking amazing. I used to play them all the time when I did the Heavy Core Chopping Block show, and I really dig them. So. Uh, we've been talking about our 666 Club, yeah. and it's an amazing way people that listen can help support the show by being a Patreon supporter, Chris. Just three bucks. Yeah, figure out internet better. That's right. <laughs> that's right. right. Uh, we got, you know, uh, T-shirts and, and our uh, adult activity books, yeah. stickers. 
We got some really cool merch. You get 10% off merch. So It's pretty fucked up. It is an adult activity book, and my daughters love it. Right, right. <laughs> we'll color some serial killers. I got something coming. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Oh, shit. I found a shirt that you're going to literally start. You'll be tears streaming down your face when you see this <laughs> oh, shirt. Oh, my God. And dude. I saw it, and I'm like, it, they were kind of expensive because I was going to get you one, too. And I'm like, man, these things are kind of high, you know? Right, and I was right. like, I think you're going to really like it. God damn it. Uh, but I got myself one, so hey, I was selfish. Hey, yeah. but, that ain't uh, selfish. But no, but you're <laughs> going to... You'll see. My, I provide uh, the pop tarts now every week. CK. Uh, yeah, I came uh, out here uh, tonight. We had Wildberry yeah. and Cherry. Help so. support our pop tart fund by yeah. joining the Patreon. Yeah, yeah I mean they're a buck a box fund, exactly. at uh, Dollar General. God you know, damn it. So <laughs> really, really fucking spending you the big money a here. Case for like twenty four bucks. I know. I know. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, join the 666 Club. Also, I mentioned the T-shirts, the new Jeff Gaither design. They're great. For full color front and back, zombie versions of us crawling out of graves, oh, yeah. blood spatter. I mean, it's, it's just awesome. perfect. So I link to all this stuff in the episode description. So go check that out. Well, I think we've done plenty of metal tonight. So, CK, I need you to tell me what the fuck we got to do. We need to get our mail on. <laughs> Hey, mate, looking for a different kind of gift for that special someone in your life? In today's world, everybody is trying to be healthy, mate. It's the end thing to do. Well, you should think about a nice, healthy walk in the woods with Malat Nature Tour Guides. It's a healthy and fun day out with your woman, and you will love it. Just think how happy she'll be when you show her that care with Malat. I took my girlfriend on one of the Malat Tour Guides, and it was quite the experience. I didn't realize that the self-defense would be a part of it, but Ivan, our tour guide, grabbed her by the throat without warning. I was able to stab him in the eye with a pen, and we got away. It was exhilarating. Hey, mate, let our seasoned guides take you and your loved ones on a date you'll never forget. Have a Foster's. Have an expert with you in this experience you'll never forget. Play some football, mate. I even learned some first aid on the tour I took with my wife on our 20th anniversary. She was stabbed, and I had to use an inflated condom to stop a sucking chest wound. That's a life lesson you can't put a price on, and a memory we'll cherish for years. <laughs> like I said before, good day, mate. Call us at 800 Malat Tours and book a tour today. You'll never look at the woods the same again. Wow. Is that a siren going off in the background? Yeah. You're so hardcore, man. So gangster. Oh that was man. perfect. I, um, Wild I, man. I did that on purpose. That's perfect. Yeah, the Malat fucking oh, commercial. Shit, I totally forgot. I bet our Australian was, I bet our Australian <laughs> listeners are like, Enough. You guys are Please awful. Stop. Shut the yeah. fuck up. This we don't sound like was that. For y'all. Yeah, yeah, we're doing this for, for fun. I hope you guys yeah. understand that. So I have a little bit of a sick motherfucker who comes up with these. I don't know. Some <laughs> sick motherfucker for sure. Oh, that shit was uh, so before fun. that diss in tomb, so fucking nasty with invocation in the cathedral of dust from their latest. So really, really brutal. Good job with that, Joey. Yeah. Did good great. Thank you. I learned a lot about those guys. I really do like them. So all right, well we yeah, are thanks in for um thanks for helping me out on that um Hell Joey. Yeah. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Fuck yeah, CK. And I know we we teased about this before and we said you were going to talk about it in mayhem, but there's a reason why you've been kind of hanging back this week. Yeah. You've been through quite the ordeal, but if you can uh, give us some an update. Sure. You can go ahead and talk about it. How much let, of it you want to talk let's about? Let's just let's just say that the back end of the weekend was not um was not stellar in the Kovacs residence. No, um, <laughs> no shit. Sunday morning, you know, I um or, or late morning, I went to get up. I'm out, out of out from the couch and um. 
I think I've said this before that I've I've been using a walker lately because um, right because my balance and everything um, is not the greatest and you know and a walker is is I, I have an upright walker which is awesome and and it helps me a lot yeah well when I get up from the couch I usually tend to stabilize myself using the walker so I had to get up. Laura's in the kitchen, which Pete knows is, you know, compared to where the couch is. Yeah, probably distance. like 10, 15 feet away. Yeah, probably a little bit more. She's washing dishes with the water on. So you got the water in the background. And I went to get up, and all she heard was a pop or a snap. Dude. Me screaming. Like she's never heard me scream before. And um, I thought I broke broke a part of the um, walker off and it hit me. Right. So she comes running in and, and she's like, well, I go, I think I, I said, I'm, I'm like in tears. Oh, I can only I'm imagine. Like, I'm like, I think part of the walker broke off of him. She goes, no, there's nothing broken on this. And um, I go, but my arm, I, I go, my arm is, is I mean, I said, I'm in the, deep pain, severe pain. And um, she got me up, kind of sitting up a little bit on the couch. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm in, I'm in pain. Right. And she's like, no, what are we going to, I go, ah, just, let me sit for a minute, see if it subsides any. And maybe, maybe it's just something I, I, I pull the muscle, maybe. Right, just minute. chill out for a second. Yeah, so um, she picks it up and lets go, and I'm like, I got no, put it back down, put it back down. I never felt a pain like that in my life. So when the arm was up, she said, by where, um, right underneath where the shoulder is, where the humerus is, there was like a bulge. God damn, dude. And um, so we didn't know if I dislocated my shoulder, if I pulled, if I ripped the muscle off the bone, or what the fuck it was. But you know, we we called nine one one. So the the next major thing is, you know, I live on the second floor. All right, getting down the get steps down. ain't gonna be easy. Get, get down because I usually used my my cane to get me down the stairs. Well, luckily, obviously, with, with all the advancements and, and medical technology, they have chairs that go down the stairs. Hell yeah. On tracks. That's awesome. You don't remember Gremlins when that lady flew out the window? Like, for real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, they got me down. I went, to, I went to the hospital. Luckily, the hospital's literally... About three quarters of a mile away. The Laura fi- followed behind, and um, we got to the hospital. I gave them what happened, gave them all the information. They took an X-ray, and he's the doctor's like, "You broke your humerus." That's a fucking tough bone to break, too. Not very humorous. And, um, yeah, it's not very humorous no, at that, all. No, that, that's the same humor. That's the same humor the doctor used. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, fuck um, that. So, what they did at the hospital was they, they put a brace and a, a sling on it. No, which is okay. I had called yesterday, got an appointment for um doctor with an orthopedic today to see exactly what they want. Now, if nobody knows, my sister law is an orthopedic surgeon. Right. Um, very well respected in... Um, Women's sports medicine, but a respected um, orthopedic in the country. That's awesome. So she said, you know, either, either two things are going to happen. They're either going to put a brace on it or they're going to put a rod through it. Mm. Um, You're metal, though. So I was okay. just going to say, uh, yeah. I hope they put a rod through it. That just makes you more metal. I was just going to say right? that. Just a little more <laughs> but, metal, uh, yeah. But I, I, went to, I went this afternoon. <laughs> the appointment 
transported the same way. And um, actually, Laura went into the X-ray room with me, and she she was actually in the in the booth when the X-ray technician took the um the picture. And That's cool. All I heard was like her going, "Oh my god!" Oh, is that obvious? Yeah. But um, wow. what they decided to do was um, they um put the brace on because with everything I got going on they want to stay away from that at, at this point but they said it, it was already starting to heal it was just beginning to heal so wow. you know the brace will stabilize it and compress it and it's you know, a lot better than what they had put on in the hospital Right. because that thing was starting to be annoying it was like fucking annoying um irritating my skin and shit huh well you know, so now i now i gotta um go for an mri and check to make sure there's nothing no other issues going on in that area wow that um, fucking sucks bro yeah that does brother it was definitely scary to hear about it yeah, i can't I imagine saw, going yeah, through it my god yeah when i saw laura post on facebook she had to call an ambulance for yeah it. we like, were worried what the man fuck, yeah man. and yeah. um you know and the reason why Joey did metal is because I I, I usually pr- do whatever preparation I have. I usually do on on Sunday. Right. And I didn't know what condition I was going to be in right. today. Um, so I obviously came up with the idea of Joey doing um, disentombed because he's um no no knows about him and it was um. To give me a break and I would just hang yeah, out. No, yeah, it's cool. no, it's cool. It's good to dude. have you hanging out so, at least, bro. Um, Hell yeah, you know, dude. So yeah. at least I'm able to. And um, you know, I'm not even recording my own track this week. I'm just, I'm like totally hanging out right. with uh-huh. the um, iPad and, Hell yeah. um, you know, giving my two cents, whatever they're worth. There you go. Well, that was a good um, story, CK. Very brutal. I'm glad you're doing yeah, better. Glad you're, dude, the fact and, that she heard the pop all the way in yeah, the kitchen. Yeah, my God. Oh, bro. God, yeah. It was, it was. That, I, that. I was like, it was, it was ridiculous. And I, like I say, I never, there's, the only pain I felt worse than that was when my colon perforated. Oof. Ouch. So many things you just uh, said make my balls squiggle in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. Oh, my God. Like, they, 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 made my, they made mine too, Joe. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I bet. Like, for real, though. Damn. But um, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. But when she, when she lifted up my arm and I saw the balls, you're like, oh, my God, that's not good. No. Yeah. No. Oh, boy. Well, while that was all happening, Joey and I were in here recording Voice of Dread uh, episode 13. We did that on Sunday. Um, you know, I got that text from your That's wife literally right when we started. 13. Yeah, That's that why. may be why. <laughs> but right when we were starting was when I got the text that said she had called the ambulance. So I was had that on my mind. Um, but I had oh, that just just that that this there's um couple people on the, on my to call us when shit goes oh goes, yeah they think that and uh pete's one of them so Hell yeah. yeah well fuck you know, yeah, he gets it. one of the first calls yeah i appreciate it dude. and then and then p usually spreads it around the um metal community right right well we did episode 13 we did it on a suggestion from chris doing some maximum overdrive yeah, i fucked that up i was supposed yeah to you it. had a family conflict and you called me and we were like literally getting ready to call harold no, it Schechter. was not a family conflict i fucked up <laughs> <laughs> well it's okay like i said family's always uh it's takes called old age. <laughs> hey, man. so that episode though goes live uh monday august 9th so if you are not a fan or have never listened to voice of dread uh, it's a different podcast that I do on horror and talk about my writing and stuff. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to play a little clip here, about five minutes from uh, my conversation with Joey on Maximum Overdrive. So check it out. Like you did in Creep Show yeah. with the guy with the with the algae and shit all yeah, over Jordy him. Yeah, Jordy Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So the idea, though, of machines coming to life with this story is an interesting one. And 
What's just a quick thumbnail sketch, Joey, of the the plot of the uh, Maximum Overdrive? And in case anybody's <clears throat> listening that hasn't actually seen it, is wondering what the hell are we talking about? <laughs> now, Maximum Overdrive is basically a story based on. Um, the day this comet goes over the earth basically is what happens right and it gives the power for all the machines to kind of take on a life of their own and right basically the machines rebel against the humans and they kill a bunch of them and then end up trapping this group of people at this uh at this truck stop where they terrorize them and eventually get them to manually pump the gas into their vehicles and basically try to make the humans the slaves. Now, I mean, that brings to mind very well why this story, again, might have been one that they decided to do at the time they did, because back in the 80s was the computer technology age. That's a good point. There were a lot of people that were actually legitimately afraid of machines taking over. Yeah, and I mean, that's a good point. I never really thought of that. That may have been, you know, just a... A common right. fear at the time, just like a lot of the nuclear war stories yeah. going on during the Cold War when people were legitimately afraid that that was really going to happen. And you have, I'm, I'm, I might be wrong about this, but I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure Dino De Laurentiis, uh, he did Maximum Overdrive, and I'm pretty sure he also had done Christine. So, oh yeah. Regardless, either way, if you saw a movie like Christine that came out, which did really well. And had the basis of this evil car. Well, what the fuck? Why not bun- have a bunch of evil semis sure. and other shit? And let's see what else that we makes can do sense. With it. That makes sense. Trying to capitalize a little bit off that, I think. Yeah. I think that's a good point. That's a good point. And one cool thing about this, Joey, is ACDC yeah. provides all the music <laughs> to the movie. I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah. In a movie where all the music is from one band, but you know, ACDC songs tend to sound the same, so it almost sounds like just a, a, mu- a constant score. soundtrack. You know? Yeah, and I mean, at that time, and probably still now, but at that time, Stephen King was a fucking huge ACDC fan. He fucking oh, sure. loved them. So yeah. for him to be in the position he was and be like, oh, I'm doing this movie, I could have. They made a whole fucking album. They did. Based yeah. off the soundtrack. Yeah, three songs and then plus some live yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it's like, okay, fucking, you can get one of the biggest rock bands in the world to do that for right. you. Then That's a good it. point. That's a good point. <laughs> Now, they put together a cast with a few names. Of course, Emilio Estevez, the big star in it. Um, he was big at the time, you know, in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, Stephen King, like as I mentioned, is a little cameo. I thought it was kind of funny, though. He's at the ATM yeah. and it calls him an asshole. This machine just called me an asshole. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, but uh, Yeardley Smith is in it. Yeah. Um, of course, everyone knows her from The Simpsons, the voice of Lisa Simpson. Um there's a lot of other familiar faces in the cast, but the acting is pretty fucking bad, in my opinion. Yeah. And I get that cheesy horror movies are not known for their acting and it almost as makes it more, you know, adds to the humor of it. But yeah. this was just really rough. I mean, I may disagree with your assessment of the movie. I really tried, <laughs> actually sat down and tried to laugh and like yeah. it, but it was. It was really bad. I don't yeah. know if it was just too cheesy for me. I don't know. I don't know. I, I dig it. I think it's funny, but it, I don't think it's that scary. No. Um, I'll say the the book, uh, the story Trucks, when I was reading that, there's the part where uh, where the kid is, is creeping around in the fucking ditches where the Bible salesman had got fucking knocked out by the fucking semi. Right. And that scene, I remember he came up on the body of the Bible salesman and he fucking came to life and grabbed at the kid. And that particular scene in that story was so fucking scary to me. Like that stayed with me for a long time. Oh, wow. And then whenever they did it in the movie, like I'm glad they did it in the movie, but it was just like, it took away any of the fear that Uh, I had from it was, it was laughable more than anything sure which sure. sucked because that was to me like the darkest part of that story huh. in the book but. interesting interesting yeah i have to i have to reread it it's been a very long time since since i've read it um now um when the waitress comes <laughs> out of the truck stop we screaming, made you yeah we made you <laughs> i was just like really getting annoyed with it because she does it a few <laughs> times and then i and i started thinking about the song Who Made Who, yeah. which, of course, is the ACDC song. So I Googled it, and they did write it specifically for this. So right. yeah. I'm going to play that clip from 
So there you go, a little oh, tease yeah. from our Voice of Dread on Maximum Overdrive. Damn it. And uh, that goes live uh, Monday, August 9th. So voiceofdread.com. What's that? Now, I already heard this. And, yes. And you guys give your views on it. And I'm just going to say one thing. Yeah. <laughs> That movie sucked. <laughs> no, that movie's um, fucking awesome. <laughs> we talk about the, the whole differences between the the, the, the viewpoints. The only good thing on about it, it was the AC/DC. soundtrack by ACDC. Yeah, I've always dug who made who, but the funny thing is, anytime it's on and I see it, and if you know, I'm by myself. I'll fucking watch it. It's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah. It's and a straight up why. guilty it's pleasure. Just, yeah, it's all good. No, we I talk about, about all that, as you that know, shit. CK. So it's about 25 minutes. Uh, voice at dread.com. Other episodes, Joey was on with me. We did The Exorcist. Exorcist that was yeah. badass. And I've done some stuff with Sean from In Malice's Wake, talking about the Saw, Saw franchise. And we've done some good ones. So voice of dread.com. All right, Chris, we got a good killer cage match tonight. Yes, we got we some do. listeners. Once again, we, we have, want to uh, thank them because they give us random numbers. We come up with 70 killers, 70 objects, and then they pick the random numbers for us. Yes, sir. What's, uh, who do we so want to say thank you? got these ladies right here, Stephanie Reskinoff, Rebecca Boomsock, and Tommy McFalls. Thank you all. Fucking keep it up. Woo-hoo. Yeah, Thanks thank for you, listening. ladies. You guys rule. Hail yeah, Satan. definitely. Hail Joey. beer. And I, and I just Foster. got one thing to say. I'm on pain meds. You're on there pain you meds. Go. That's all right. We're kind of all on pain meds, drinking Fosters. And <laughs> God damn it. I drank all three of these. Pop-Tarts. I brought Pop-Tarts out here. I mean, we've been eating out here oh, today. Yeah. You're, fucking, you're fucking doing it up. Uh, we are. We are. Got the green room here, you know. <laughs> all right. So we got a little mismatch this week, Joey. Who's uh, who's fighting to death tonight? Uh, Big-ass motherfucking Ed Kemper. He's going up against. Oh, boy. Not so small, but a little softer uh, Jim Jones. Right. Right. Fiery preacher, yep. cult leader, cult killer. We talked about him, of course, and Ed Kemper, both. Now, uh, CK, they got a couple of good objects in here. One, it's been a while since this Ooh, has come yeah. up. But this is raunchy, uh, CK. Who? What are they fighting with tonight? Um, they're fighting with, they'll have a pair of brass knuckles. Yep. This is a good one. It no, is. Oldie no. but a goodie, Chris. Hmm. Okay, everybody hmm. ready? Go ahead, CK. Drum roll. And a two-liter bottle of stinky, diseased pussy juice. Yeah, oh, that's, man. That's delicious. That I'm sounds like a that. whoremonger song. It does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, it a two-liter bottle of stinky, yeah. diseased pussy juice needs to be a goremonger song. And now, the variable, though, I mixed it up. I got 15 brand new ones. CK, what's the variable this it, week? This is a good one. Yep. The variable is Walter White after eating a handful of mushrooms. Oh, boy. Of course, psychedelic mushrooms. Jesus. Walter White on mushrooms. So, all right. So, we've got uh, we got Ed Kemper versus Jim Jones fighting to death in a cage. And they got a pair of brass knuckles and an oldie but a goodie. A two-liter bottle of stinky, diseased pussy juice. That is fucking a, vile. A new, so, a new, a new Gormonger song. So we there you go. Song. That's right. In uh, the next couple of weeks. Even if it's three seconds. Yeah. Right? I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, the very, you could just have the glug, glug, glug right. of the thing, and that's the song. <laughs> the variable Walter White after eating a handful of mushrooms. All right. So everybody bitches about going after Joey. So, CK, why don't you go first tonight? Everybody bitches now, about it. Right? <laughs> no, because Joey comes up with these fucked I know, up he things does. nobody else would He does. Up. He comes up with good stuff. But because of that, we'll let him headline the segment. And so, yeah. CK, you start it off. Start it off right. Now, Who's, what's going down in the cage? I, I don't think there's any fucking competition here. It's like Andre the Giant going against... Um, I don't know, like some fucking ninety. Me, Richard fucking, Simmons. <laughs> me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ed Kemper is gonna fucking destroy Jim Jones because all Jim Jones, Jim Jones does is he has the mind power. He's not a physical guy. He never physically killed anybody. He just was fortunate to have these stupid people who followed him and killed themselves by drinking the um, flavor aid. Right. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, flavor it. Yeah. 
Um, Got packets of it out here on the table. <laughs> Great. So you I got all think, kinds um, of crazy shit. Not not that not that um, Ed Kemper's not not even going to need any of the variables, but I think for the fun of it, he's just going to choke choke Jim Jones out first, and just um, take the brass knuckles and shove them up his ass. Okay. And rip out his intestines. Oh wow. Damn, he gets fucking after, violent. After he does that, he's going to drink the two-liter bottle of stinky disease pussy juice. Just drink it, <laughs> hell yeah. And, and fucking Walter White's going to be tripping out so much, he's going to partake in the um, drinking of the pussy juice as well in addition to. Right, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. That's pretty rough, but okay. So um, we're, going, we're going Ed Kemper for the win. There you all go. All right, uh, Chris, what about you, dude? I kind of have the same idea as... CK a little bit, a little but I figure like fucking that. Walter White, he's fucking already fucking eating shrimp. Yeah. I don't out think in the he's desert. gonna be doing it. He's anything. out in the desert in his underwear already. If he sees you know, Kemper like tripping. flinging fucking Jim Jones around that cage, he's gonna fucking. Yeah, he's like man. waking up like Jesse did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, Jesse, Blame it on Jesse. Yeah, Blame it on Jesse or Pete. Uh, fucking. Uh, but yeah, so she's not here. White has nothing to do with it. He's fucking high as shit. Don't give a fuck in his underwear. Right. Fucking so as far as the the bottle and the brass knuckles, I feel like Jim Jones might have a chance because he's all coked up and fired up anyway. He could move if he wants. It's possible. So if yeah. he gets the brass knuckles, maybe he could fucking get Kemper. But that two liter bottle of juice, fucking I feel like I feel like Jones is the one that wants the bottle of pussy juice more because he he's like t- telling everybody I'll fuck you if you want. He right. just wants yeah, he that. He just wants that bottle of juice. There. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So okay. he wants that. that. So that's but, a good take on it. All right, <laughs> but I'm just saying. So like, if Jim Jones don't get those brass knuckles, he definitely loses. I'm giving it to Kemper though, no matter what. Yeah, I agree with you there. I don't see how Kemper loses. He's just a fucking monster. Joey, what about you, dude? Uh, I think... Uh, Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't going that hard tonight, CK. But whenever they're in the in the cage and they ring the bell, uh, I think Jim Jones is going to run over to that fucking two-liter bottle of stinky disease pussy juice, and he's going to start pouring it out and just snorting lines of that shit. Right. <laughs> oh, damn. Because he's so fucking out there and thinking he's going to fucking see God like that. Ed Kemper, he's going to run over. He's going to grab them fucking brass knuckles. He's going to walk up to Jim Jones fucking toss him the brass knuckles to give him a handicap because he needs one. Right. Then he's going to turn around and he's going to then he's going to turn around and grab Walter White by the ankles and baseball swing him, swing him and knock fucking oh, Jim Jones's right. head off and then he's going to take Jim Jones's head and fucking fuck it like his mom. Like his mom. <laughs> nice. So Ed Kemper for the win. Fuck yeah. Kemper for the win. Ed there Kemper. Nasty. All right, we all think Ed Kemper's winning this one. But yeah, that's 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 always fun. So we love some killer cage match. Always welcome you guys giving us suggestions of people Hell to yeah. add to the list. We got seventy of them. They need probably to get more, maybe a hundred. Uh, that'd be cool. All right, I did want to mention. You know, Joey and I did the interview with Harold Schechter. It turned oh, out yeah. really good. Uh, like I said, we're going to use parts of it in upcoming episodes. The entire thing, though will be an episode toward the end of the month here in August so that this way um, people can hear the entire thing. It's like almost a half hour. Yeah. Um, but we talked about a lot of different subjects, and that's really cool. And Harold's got a new graphic novel coming out. I wanted to mention it. I actually pre-ordered it on Amazon, but it's a graphic novel, like 200 pages. And he said it's really good. It's called Did You Hear What Eddie Gein Done? Um, it looks pretty cool. The er- Eric Powell is the artist, and I don't follow like comics or graphic right. novels, so I'm not sure. But he said he's like a pretty one of the, top. One of the yeah. top, if not the top. So artists out there. So the art is really cool, very dark, and so there's that uh, on Amazon. I was able to get that, and then uh, my audio book I mentioned before, Creation of Chaos Three. <laughs> It's out there on Audible, it's on iTunes, it's on Amazon, and it's like 24 bucks if you're not a member, and then, and then I think it's like 17 if you are, so uh, I've got links to that as well. If you're not familiar with Audible, I know Chris had always talked about it to me, and 
I just recently started digging on it, and I've it works listened to a driving, lot of books. Yeah, yeah, when I when it you guys traveling you. to do, it's it great. Works. Yeah, it's, it's great. Awesome. And so my book is about ten and a half hours long, so you definitely get your money's worth there. Yeah, it's definitely a labor of love. Oh um, yeah, definitely. I know. I I know. Holy shit, you went through to get this thing yeah, done. And, it was such a bitch. And often. Yep, to get it to their specifications, they're at Audible. Yeah. They're very picky, so. <laughs> But yeah, so it's all good. All right, well, I guys, I think we've done plenty of mayhem tonight, so let's hit the fucking outro. Crikey. Fuck yes. Harlot killing it. Harlot man. killing it is right with Evil Minded Love from that their band. new new album is so great from uh, on Metal Blade. Detritus of the New Age. Great fucking album. Great dudes. So we played Desecrator earlier, which is uh, the singer for Harlot and right. guitarist Adam or uh, Hudson. 920, baby. <laughs> There's the, yeah, the 920 threw me off there. Andrew <laughs> Hudson from both plays in both bands. So that's really cool. But yeah, Harlot, great band. All Australian bands tonight. Oh, and yeah. that's fucking cool. Bumper music by Harlot, Desecrator, and Disentomb. So thanks to our Aussie listeners fucking for right, always dude. suggesting this stuff. Love that and shit. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, the other fucking Australian bands. Yeah. Gabe and Malice's Wake. They're right. Fucking so many, dude. There's so many good ones. So uh, and yeah. I, dude, I like 12 Foot Ninja. They're from Australia. I fucking Oh, they Foot are Ninja's from? I didn't badass. know they were from Australia. That's cool. I think we're discovering a hotbed of, of, of metal. I know, because last no, no, no. Australian episode we played in Malice's Wake and yeah. Gabe. I can't remember the third one offhand, but uh, but yeah, I mean, just good good stuff. One of so. my favorite bands from uh, Australia, but one of my favorite bands, period, a big influence for Goremonger is uh, Blood Duster. Oh, I love Blood yeah. Duster, dude. Oh, Fuck God, yeah. I, I, yeah, I've oh, got yeah. like two or three of their albums. Lost Classic. They're great. There you go, CK. That would be a good band to do, <laughs> no, CK. No, that would be a great That band would be do. a good band to do, CK. Yeah, I, I gotta look into they're that. not around anymore, sure. but no. the, but no, uh, there's plenty were... of stuff out there on them. I got a, a DVD. Really cool. Yeah, I got a DVD of theirs. Hell that's yeah. pretty cooking crazy. All right, so good bumper music tonight, CK. Your intro music is by which band? Cry Six, F- or as my good buddy would say. Oh, <laughs> oh, huh. I think next week we got a little discussion between uh, the weepy voice and his nemesis, uh, fucking uh, the, the, Creole, the, Creole. the old Creole yeah, man. He's just fucking fired up. So we're gonna get some statements from them. I think next week. I so think I'm gonna pretty yeah, excited. I think I'm going out by the guns. Be up today. Oh, he did he? <laughs> Joe, are you going to be going out to the 419? I think I'm going out to the 419 and might see how Punky's doing after oh, getting beat down, so we'll see. Damn, all right. Well, this should be <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, Chris, the Murder Metal Mayhem intro by which band? No motherfucking 12. What's up, motherfuckers? Hell yeah, yeah. and the 6-6 six, six fucking okay. 6 music by our buddies in Onslaught. Fuck yeah. Uh, thanks to everybody out there listening. It's great to see the numbers coming in, and we really do appreciate it very, very yeah, much. So thanks, rule. guys. Hell yeah, thank you for listening. Yeah, Chris, we, we got a good first comment. Oh yeah, we got Nora Hillsworth says... Uh, this has been my favorite podcast for more than a year. You guys are so funny. I want a ton from listening to you. I can't believe more people don't know about Murder Metal Mayhem. I'm listening in Atlanta, Georgia. Hell yeah. Georgia, what's Thanks, up? Thanks, Nora. Thank you, That's Georgia. really cool. Yeah, thank you. Hell okay. yeah. It's my favorite podcast as well. <laughs> Joey, what about the second one, dude? Uh, Carrie Smith 666 commented, I love the Alcatraz episode you guys did. I really found out more than I thought I would. I do love your prison episodes. Crazy stuff. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Carrie. 
my buddy Testes was fucking out there in San Francisco, and yeah, like yeah. they were look. He was like, "Yeah, yeah Testes is cool." Yeah, ass he was like, "What kind of murder shit was out here?" And I was telling him like, you know, a couple of them or whatever. I was right. like, "There was Ramirez spots." And, oh and yeah. I was like, "You can go buy Alcatraz," but he said because of, like the COVID time, they didn't have the tours going on. But, oh. but he was able to stand on the coast and get pictures of it. So oh, nice. He's like, "I'm transferring your ass here." I was like, "Bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit yeah. Very cool. Like, uh, CK, what about the next one? I like this screen name. I, I love this um this name. Sammy says it ain't so so <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan from Chicago. Go I figure. <laughs> I know, right? Love Sammy Sosa up there, man. Uh huh. The mix of metal and murder is fucking epic. Keep up the sickness. Oh, yeah. sign, that's for sure. Fucking right. Thank yeah, you. big time. From all the comments I think we're definitely succeeding with. I agree. I agree. And Marsha Elkins commented, if you guys ever go on tour, please come to Dallas. I have a group of friends at work that just love you guys. We crank it up in the warehouse, and when the bosses go home for the day, it's so funny to hear it on the big speaker system, especially the karaoke (laughs) songs at the end. So that's cool, Marsha. Oh, shit. And I'm glad you guys at work there like it, and uh, horns up from us here. Thank you guys for the support. Don't we, love, we love all our fans. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to check out MurderMetalMayhem.com to listen to the past episodes. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we're on pretty much every podcast app that's out there. So whatever you use, just type, type in Murder Metal Mayhem and you'll find it. Also, support the show. Join that 666 Club. We talk about it a lot, but... It's a way to help support what we're doing. Uh, Patreon.com slash Murder Metal Mayhem, and I'll link and, to that. And we don't, take pay, we don't get paid for this. No, at all. no. Uh, On our dime. No, free. right. It costs money to post the website and host Correct. it and all that stuff. It's not free. Correct. But we like doing it, and it's fun. And But any support you can give always helps. Buy more Pop-Tarts for the guys <laughs> uh, <Right>. and things <laughs> like that. Gets a little bit more laughs. Yeah, we might even get the high dollar pop tarts Chris, right. you know, if we not got some the, Patreon. Not in dollar store pop tarts. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling the veggie might be gone by on there. I am not <laughs> eating no Ooh, more of that Vegemite. shit. Maybe. Fuck. I wonder if they yeah. make Vegemite pop tarts in Australia. That's That'd fucking be fucking gross. cool. Yeah. yeah. Filled with Vegemite. Oh, uh, gross. <laughs> All right. You can go to creationofchaos.com if you want to pick up one of my books and check out the episode description for links to the physical books with poster and bookmark or audible uh, audio books on audible iTunes and I, uh, Amazon. Also member, uh, if you want to check out the voice of dread, go to voice of dread.com. Check out peace podcast. Yeah. The new one I did with Joey will be Monday, August 9th. So that'll be a cool way to start your week here. Let's talk about maximum overdrive, but I had done this karaoke song a while back. I th- it might have been when we did Catherine Knight. I mean, it's been around for one of the early ones I did. And uh, it fits, though, for this episode being Australian-themed. So crank this one the fuck up. And until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. Keep the other one on somebody's face. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to do a big Australian accent. Trillin' full of zombie I met a strange lady She made me nervous She took me in and gave me breakfast And she said Do you go from the lake down under? Where women glow and men plunder Get your hand, get your hand on the door You better run, you better take cover Do you speak about language?